What's up, potheads and political junkies? You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. I'm Jeremiah, editor of Cannabis Culture and Pod TV. And we're broadcasting live to you on Pod.TV right now. You can always check out all of what we got going on here in the building at Pod.TV or Cannabis Culture. And we got my man Johnny B in the audience here. He's already busting up some weed there, I see. You should come do that over here, probably. Oh, you can take the place of my laptop case. We uh, posted one of John's pictures last night on our Instagram feed. Man, that was some crazy uh, trichomes all over that thing. Drive Is that the stuff right there? The oh, come and show that off to the cam here. And actually, we have a desk cam. Just we should be able, as long as it, uh, I don't see it there in the mini cam okay. thing though, so it's not gonna work there. Yeah, put your hand right up to it. Yeah, and then lift, lift it up a little bit. Oh yeah, baby. Oh man, that's a nice looking bar. Marius, they say it sounds a bit echoey. Is yeah, this... uh, did you check? Did you check the what it's coming in from the input device? I'm not hearing that might cut down on the echo a little bit. It's it would be the gain that's up a little too high on those ones. You see the little black knobs above? That's got to come down, and the volume's got to come up, boys. That's what causes echo. Or you could. You could change it to so it actually uh, receives stuff from the uh, oh, here, here, here. from the mixer board by hitting external. Yeah. Better there now. There's no. There should be no echo. Although that's a little loud. There we go. How's that, boys? Is that a bit better on the headphones, Mars? Can you actually hear now? You're supposed to be monitoring for sound over there. <laughs> okay. Right. Can you hear it? Thank you. All right. So, Johnny, what was the actual cross of that that you posted last, or that we posted on Instagram last night? Okay, so some people have been asking some questions about the the Hoss, and the way the name came up is because oh, it's the Hoss. That's what it was. Hoss. You wrote H O S, and I was like, yes. And the Hoss from what I've talked about with uh, Bubble Man Mark, we uh, did some videos on it. We were talking about the lineage behind it. And it's from a bag that was marked 92, and it was SKNL, Skunk K's Northern Lights. So going back and taking a look, there was a Northern Light number five Skunk K's around those days. Don't know where I tamed the beans from. Could have been from bag, but it was marked on a little bag. You just found them? No, I have a lot of, I have a lot of C's probably from the early 80s up until now. I've been growing and playing and growing my medicine for my whole life, it seems like. You know? Right. Having a lot of fun. And um, so those were the males that I came across and then there were some other uh, genetics that were popped in 2009 and we had uh, some greenhouse bubba there were some PKs we had some M1234s and there were some bag seeds marked Dave's OG from Kelowna and a long story short out of one of those stood out one of the best um, which um, floated around town here for a while and uh, at that point I bred it with uh, the NL SK which came out to be what we're calling the Hoss, because it's a skunk haze, OG Kush cross of some sort. That is quite amazing. And that's what so, we're just looking at. So that's what we're looking at. That was the post that you put on Instagram yesterday. Uh, thanks for the shout out. You know, I got a bunch yeah. of followers and uh, nice, good. you know, having a good time there. And, and now we're going to puff the one on one and then we're going to finish it off with the Hoss. Nice. And we all know what the 101 is. Oh, the 101. Is. Yeah, the tell 101. people what the 101. The 101 is a Skunk Hayes Northern Lake Cross with uh, Bubba Kem. Bubba Kem was my third place winner for the Saskatoon Cup back in 2012. Right. And Bubba Kem is a pre-98 Bubba Kush cross with a Kem for reunion, so it was Bubba Kem. We've been smoking that on the show a lot these days. Oh, over the years, yes. We've been yeah. smoking a lot of different stuff. So um, this is more the Sativa 101. It's because it went 101 days. Right. And um, it was part of the strain that I'm That's calling My Little on. Pony Kush because this was just one of those phenos that went an extra longer. So, yeah, it's all those lineages. It's just having a little bit of fun, you know, making a little bit of medicine and uh, grow your own. If people want to hook up with your Instagram feed, drop your at address there. At 420 Weedmaster. 420 Weedmaster. 420 Weedmaster. 420 Weedmaster. Yeah, and you've been getting a lot of props for your Instagram feed because you got a lot of nice pictures on there. Even what? High Times said you're one of the dopest out there. Uh, top five Weedstagram Instagram accounts. Um, well, they're just um, they're all original strains, all from seed. Um, nothing there is from clone. Everything there is uh, stuff that I've been playing with and had the pleasures of popping other people's genetics over the years. So, I mean, it's uh, a lot of fun. It's about growing medicine, and that's what I love doing. Excellent, man. 
So and also, of course, my YouTube channel. I've been doing. Yeah. I've been doing uh, my medicine, uh, how I make my hash. So uh, my YouTube channel is just my name, John Burfello. You can definitely check me out on uh, Bubble Man's World and, of course, uh, <laughs> CNC Live. I've been with Enrico. And, and if you've ever picked up a medtainer before, I actually happen to have one of those oh right yeah. here. So, so uh, is that joint already rolled? Of the that, that's the all Christmas Kush is rolled. Oh, the Christmas Kush. Start with that if you oh, want. Okay, sure. And then I'm going to roll this one. Mm. That's tasty. Well, what's, what's new in cannabis news in Canada? What's oh, going on? Well, the topic of the show today, this is news that actually happened um, a week or two ago. We talked about it a little bit on last week's show. Um, we're going to talk about it a little bit more in depth on today's show. There's a judge in BC, Judge Galati, who yeah. was presiding over a drug case that involved um, an East Side Vancouver guy who basically is a, um, a drug addict. Um, he's got a bunch of different problems. Let me just tell you what, uh, what his actual count was here. He ha his name is um, Lloyd. What's his first name? Joseph Ryan Lloyd. And he was 25 years old. He's got a grade 10 education. He's got tw 21 prior convictions, including fraud, forgery, theft, assault, possession pr uh, of a prohibited weapon, and drug conviction charges. So he's got a bunch of stuff. This guy isn't the nicest guy in the universe. Um, he's got some problems. But... Um, there's this new mandatory minimum sentences that the conservatives have put in, which basically say that if you were convicted of the same crime twice in 10 years of the ones that they have selected, then you go to jail, a mandatory minimum sentence of one year. So um, the judge found that in this particular case, sending this particular drug addict to jail for a small time drug conviction because he's been convicted in the last 10 years was not reasonable. In fact, it was cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, and the judge is saying that this law would make it so that it is cruel and unusual to put people who are drug addicts uh, in prison. And he basically threw the law out as unconstitutional. Well, if I'm rightly mistaken, if uh, you're a drug addict, they call it a disease, it's conditions. You can't throw someone in jail for having a disease. Right. And his disease was supplying his habit. And for small amounts of sales of marijuana and illicit drugs to supply himself with, why would we want to put people in jail for uh, that's a costly um, recovery program, I would think. Well, and that's what, I mean, you're going to sweep up so many people if they try and stick through with these kinds of laws. Um, that's why these mandatory minimums, if they do go through with them, are destined to increase jail size as we need more beds. Well, let's refer the mandatory minimum sentencing laws have gone through is if the judges enforce them or not. Well, that's what I mean, and that's if what they don't get overturned. Exactly. As we're seeing here, um, this particular one has now been ruled of no force and effect, the judge said. But, of course, this is on a lower court level. This will be put through the courts and it'll have to go higher because I mean obviously the government will appeal this decision. Well let's see. I can't wait to see what happens with it for now. Uh, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Christmas Kush. I think you took a picture of this uh, during the Christmas um, I, remember yeah, I remember that. I remember that picture. Yeah. That was really awesome. It was sitting on with a bunch of pine cones and uh, other Christmassy type stuff on a silver platter. Silver platter weed. Uh, well, ashtray? Oh um, that's okay. You can we can use anything. Oh, for, that'll work. That's perfect. I got the lid to my med tanning. Here, I got one. Oh, you got an Astra. And we should probably um, do some bong rips. I have some Angola here that I just got today. That's pretty nice. Look at, oh, look, you got it in a nice little rip. I've got package. it in a, a homemade baggie. This is my own homemade Ziploc. If you're in ever in words, need... If someone had a handful of weed, he had a binder on him and said, here, put it in here. If you ever... He had yeah. a baggie, he's like, I got If anything. you don't have a baggie, paper, man. Paper's the way Dude, to go. your hand. Well, hand, but then you got to carry it around all day with you, and I don't That's want to put true. it in my pocket. I can't do that. Yeah, but check out the Angola. Take a look at that. That's nice stuff too. So yeah, we're gonna. They I can't do, see this. That's they awesome. can't see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I have an interview with uh, cannabis lawyer Kirk Tusaw because I wanted to know how these this judge's decision and some of the other recent decisions in court that also overturn mandatory minimums how those would affect cannabis laws. Because, of course, we do have our mandatory minimums for marijuana now. Six, six months for six plants straight away. Mandatory and sentencing for six plants or more. Um, up to 200, it's up to nine months in jail. From 200 to 500, it's anywhere from a 12 months to three years. 720 more is five to ten years in prison. Wow, that's just right in line with, like, um, rapists. Yeah, it really is. Yeah? It's like, crazy. So so if you grow Ch more than Child molesters plants. get less time. No, they do. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to grow a little bit of herb. Yeah. 
No, I know it's it's pretty sick. And with sick. this whole new changes, what's going on? Legalization worldwide. Uh, everything's just changing so much. And yeah, right over the border, you can go down there in Colorado. You can grow six plants legally. Everybody can grow six plants. And what they're about putting the people, people from Colorado coming up here and being involved with the commercial production facilities now that are in play, which is nine, I believe now, that are supplying supposed to be supplying Canadians with medical marijuana. So really, it's uh, it's turned into an American game way. I'm looking at it. Yeah, well, I think it is, and because they have the, the U.S. experience because we've had the illegal behind it, medical with no research. Yeah, well, and the U.S. over the years, of course, have been the the people perpetrating this global drug war. Yes. Um, in such huge ways that it really, I'm glad to, I am glad to see it happening there because you know now there's no excuse. All these other countries can't say, well, the states is forcing us to now. You know, the Canadian government can't say our American partners want us to do this. They used that excuse many times before. Always saying, well, there's too much pressure from the United States. Absolutely. Not anymore. They're doing it first. I haven't had any of that Colorado weed yet, though. No, neither have I. No. Actually, well, wait a second. When I was in Amsterdam and um, Rare Dankness and uh, River Up Medicinals there, Tony, they, uh, they had some of their stuff. That, it was tasty. Wow. You know, these guys are really doing a good job down there. The research is quite amazing. Looking at different times, different temperatures, different equities, being able to harvest the trichrome heads, taking a look at different conditions for one-to-one -one ratios for kids with patches, with CBDs and stuff. Like, they're doing some amazing research down there, and it's really exciting to actually, actually see that start happening here in Canada. As much as we don't like the way it's happening, but the research is going to start really coming out where it's going to start helping people with a lot of different conditions we have no idea what even going on with them so we're starting to see because of the effects. mmpr stuff because of the mmpr these, right. these research production facilities these production facilities can have big research wings to them and i think that's really the key that they're looking at because with the world changing and with the legalization in the u.s these places can now actually legally supply these places so why would they be getting in tune with what they're doing down there right right and you know that's what i keep saying that not all of the mmpr is bad there's actually some pretty decent parts of it if they wouldn't get if they hadn't got rid of don't people's home growing my right to grow. yeah if they didn't get rid of the don't home growing take away my right to be grow all right medicine. that's what it comes down to i mean they're doing it in colorado they don't take away the right to grow but now they're able to access medicine and recreational and everything so. although did you see what's happening in washington we played a video on the show last yeah. week um, that they're actually taking the dispensaries down mm -hmm. in Washington State and doing a bunch of other shenanigans. So that's not good. No, I, that's, that's state control now. They've changed their... Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting what they're doing in Washington. It'll be interesting to see what happens once... Um, I can't imagine... Alaska I mean, people are going to be really legal, upset. Right? What's going to happen there? Yeah, Alaska. It's going to happen. Yeah, now the Alaska thing's interesting because that's coming up for August. August yeah, it's coming up sooner than later. And... That's a recreational vote, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could have three states, good Lord, that will be completely surrounded here in Canada by American states that have legal pot and will still be illegal in Canada, British Columbia. BC, one on top, one below. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to be the illegal ones now. And we, what are we known for? BC Bud? Wow. Yeah, that totally. It's my new thing now, just wow. Wow. What, the, what everybody's doing. Wow, I can't believe this is actually happening. <laughs> um, let's see here. My friend, so Brittany, Britt Mitchell from Brantford, Ontario. How's Brittany doing? One of the, uh, she's good. That's great. She's going to be on the show. She's joining us by uh, FaceTime. Nice. I'm going to try and get her in here for 420. Let's see if. Uh, well, 420. It's coming up really quick, like right two now. seconds away. Let's see if we it's can a go 420. there. Let me see if I can call her now. Happy 420, everybody. Too much stuff open. Keep items. Oh. Actually, you say 420, this says 419, so I just jumped the gun. <laughs> but I was looking at his laptop, and for some reason, he's on a minute quicker. I don't understand that one. Yeah, it's not it's not quite, but yeah, we're, we're a minute ahead of you. Yeah, thanks. No, it is 420, though. I, I got a little excited. To this one minute warning. <laughs> Yours is just a minute behind. I'm the one minute warning. I'm going to say happy 420 out there to everybody. Okay, it's always 420 somewhere. Oh, look at that. So... I know. I can see myself. I'm trying to get Brittany in can on here. Can people see you there? Am, um, I, am I still here? You're here. Nice. Yeah, people can see. They, that camera there is recording both of us. This is just the FaceTime. Oh, you can't see this, guys. It's a close-up mm. of his eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's squinty. So, 
So uh, we're going to play the Kirk thing, but I just wanted to bring her out here first, but we're trying to connect. Let's see. I'm calling you. There we go. Accept. I just accepted. Hello there. Let's see if we can hear you properly. Now we've got the 420 oh, alarm so going off, and we're all out by a minute. Marius, my in, the in-house sound is now Happy 420 all the way wherever down. you are. Do you know days. what happened to that? Yeah. Can we turn that up a bit? Is she, is it there? Brittany, can you say hello to us? Hello. Hello. We can hear you now. Okay. So <laughs> I have a voice. Big screen. And uh, if, if you flip your camera the other way, we might be able to see you uh, widescreen style on the screen there. Widescreen. Oh, yeah. There we gotcha. Hi, Britt. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfect. Excellent. Oh, this one's so, the one I just uh, Scarlet 420, as the chatters know you, or wait, you have so many names. Duchess 420. Track. Duchess 420, of course. No, and speaking of Duchess, okay, we do look. have Duchess right here as well. Let me pack Duchess Couldn't up see for you. Oh, Well, sure. then you have to give her a smoke then. Hell yeah. I see you got a free <laughs> Mark shirt on. Woo. For sure. Nice. <laughs> so, Brantford, Ontario. What's going on it's in Brantford? place. <laughs> Is it snowing there? Uh, it's not snowing right now, but I'm getting tired of the cold and the ridiculous amount of snow that's on my front lawn that I can't get rid of. <laughs> You're getting a lot. <laughs> um, can it, is it possible to turn her up even more? I can barely hear her. Just ever so slightly. There we go. Is it too loud? Is it right now too loud? <coughs> well, it's quite well, nice. So turn up, turn I up the there. Joint. I got the bomb. Okay. That should be better. Good enough. Would you like to try that? Sir? And uh, Brittany, so this year, just uh, not too long ago, or at least I don't know how long the, the club's been around for, but you started getting involved this year with the Brantford Cannabis Club. Yes, it's been around since October, and already we have over 260 people who have joined the group, which was surprising for a city that was closed-minded as Brantford, but apparently I was wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, so how many people are in the group? 60? Over 260. Oh, 260. Wow, I was going to say, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's yeah, we kidding. have about 93,000 people in this city. Not exact number on that. <laughs> pretty close. Very cool. Um, is that okay, Marius, on the headphones over there? No, she's wasting the... Oh, is it okay now? Yeah, if you turn that one up. Can we hear her now okay? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. We just had you pretty loud there for a second. Sorry, they're... Dealing with sound issues. So, um, so you guys are doing the 420 event this year in Brantford. Britt, what do you guys got okay. planned? Well, it's the first one ever, um, and it's going to be great because we have some guest speakers coming out who are running for city council, as well as people from the Liberal Party who are in the area who are willing to come out and speak for us. So it's great that we have um, a great amount of support coming from people that you would never even expect. <laughs> That's cool. Yep. Um, I'm having a bit... Is it really loud, Marius? Is that the problem? Is it still really loud, though? Because I can't barely hear her at all right now. So turn it up just a little bit, and if it's too loud for them, then they can turn us both down ever so slightly. I just need to be able to hear her at least a little bit, for God's sake. <laughs> and if you need to turn my mic up, too, and then turn, the bo turn them both down, then try that. I wonder that. how my mic is. Everybody can hear me. Yeah, you're, you're nice and quiet over there. Okay, Britt, now talk. Chilling. Hello. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You're not too loud. That's perfect. Okay, that's good. Okay, now I can hear you just fine. So that's dope about the Brantford Cannabis Club. Now, if people want to get involved with you guys, you guys have, you don't have a website up yet, but you guys do have a Facebook page, right? We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram under Brantford Cannabis Club, and also on Twitter under Brant yeah. Cannabis. Cool. And if now, you're looking for me, you can find me at Duchess420 on Instagram. That's you have tons of great Instagram shots, um, and also <laughs> yeah. they can find you in the chat of What's the pot. Instagram? What's say your Instagram again, Brett? Duchess420. Duchess no T. I'm pretty sure I followed you, Duchess. <laughs> Johnny's on the case, and oh. uh, also in the <laughs> chat of Pod TV, you do watch the shows a lot. You've been around for a yeah. while watching Pod TV shows as well. That's kind of how we bumped into each other. Yep. 
<laughs> and that was before <laughs> before I heard you were an activist or anything. Aren't we all activists? She's been doing, yeah. Whenever you light a joint back in the days, that was a form of activism because I kept lighting. I never stopped. That's that's a different kind of activism, though. Because, I mean, there's that's a type of activism, but it's a really easy type of activism. No, I think we started just actually marching down the streets and hanging out at the yeah. gallery back in the mid-90s. Now, Brittany, I was going to ask you, what do you, are you anticipating any trouble from the police there? I know that here in Vancouver, we don't have any trouble because we've been working for years on it. But in a small town like Brantford, the cops are a little more conservative usually. It's really hard to say. I don't think it will be an issue, but it's really hard to say. If you're acting out and causing trouble, clearly there's going to be an issue. If you're bringing a big bong and passing around all your buddies, you sorry guys, you're probably going to get in trouble, let's be honest. Right. But if you're sticking to yourself and you're not passing or anything, I think everything will go smoothly. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that there is a, the stigma seems to be coming a little bit more relaxed in some places, although you got to be careful because in places like Winnipeg, they're even going after the head shops themselves. Yeah. So, and so it's weird how across Canada we have such a disparity on the rules themselves and how cops in some places can just you know, lock people up or throw them, throw them away for pod and some pl towns don't even care at all and we're selling it openly in the streets of Vancouver, literally in the streets, the cops <laughs> help us shut the streets down. What a dream. <laughs> we're, we're hoping to make that come true over here too. Water, uh, John asked if they're still executing people somewhere. Yeah, they sure are actually. I mean, Malaysia. I mean. Malaysia, you get executed. Yeah, there's other places too that they still have. Uh, the that, that's like death a wow thing pot. to say. Could you imagine that for a plant? That's crazy. For a plant material. I definitely don't want to live there. What What are you smoking there, Britt? Well, I have a mixture. I have Larry's and Green Crack, also oh, known as Crack. Nice. Crumb. <laughs> and I gotta say, it looks really crisp on FaceTime, better than our uh, Skype connection. For sure, but you need to upgrade to HD, my friend. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just did that, and now... Uh... Yeah, I just got it from Kyle Stay High Net, actually. Yeah, he was giving a few of them out, and I was able to pick that up. That was awesome. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hook Jer up now. <laughs> I'm taking a bong rip. So, of course, that would be the 101. Gotta get him with a sativa. Then we're gonna hit him hard with some indicas. So I didn't bring any. Ad oh wait a second. Whew. Okay, don't That'll pick me up. Animals. I thought I had some. Uh, oh god. Pick some some tears in my pocket. Ah uh, no! Keep the edibles away from me. I know. <laughs> Start falling apart. Well, that's what happened at the pizza place last week. <laughs> yeah, that was. Oh man, uh, we Mega went to Hill Mega Ill Pizza last week, and uh, had infused pizza. It was really good. I saw those pictures. It looked pretty good, too. Actually, I make that myself. You should have seen the you pictures make, after we went own. off. Oh, really? I make gluten-free pizza, because that's how I eat. Uh, vegetarian, of course. Um, um, I make it with the sauce. I make an olive oil sauce with garlic and basil, and it's that's how it's done. <coughs> yeah, Mega, Mega Ill is cool, because... Um, you have to, it's kind of like, you have to actually ask for it. It doesn't say anywhere on the menu that the pizza is infused, but if you ask for it, they will infuse it for you. Um, they ask for a license to make sure you're medical. Right. And if you have a medical license, they will infuse it for you, um, and which is important, because uh, they want to know, make sure it's, it is your medicine, and that's the best way to take it, is orally anyway, so. Right. Well, and man, those pizzas, aside from the whole infusion part, which is totally awesome, the pizzas themselves are really some of the best pizzas I've had in Vancouver. Like the actual... Well, the, the way, way Mark's gone and Bone Rocky, they've done a good job. They've hired the proper chefs. They do caramel onions and they do maple bacon and, and they take the peppers and they mix them with sweet pep. I mean, it's just they're, they're doing some really crazy things with their food. And then, of course, with Stoners, we love tasty sweet <laughs> food so it's like work i'm ready for second mm. dinner over here there, like i was saying to mark <laughs> you hang out for like hours yeah it's hard it's like one of those places like here at the vapor lounge where you just get caught up and you don't want to leave mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i normally stay for about three days i got my cot in the back that's the way to do it just hang a hammock up somewhere i, I roll a mattress <laughs> in the corner well i just made a joke because i was that's you here it referred to in the past that maybe i was living cot. in the back yeah exactly i think Chatters have mentioned that. 
Man. Because you do pop up on a lot of our shows. Well, you know what? It's just because I love this community so much, and I'm always in the area, and it's nice to stop by and hang out with some friends and have a chat with people and uh, really get into the education and talk more about this uh, great thing. So you don't live in the alley? You know, um... It's comfortable out there. <sighs> the car. rats, we don't hear any complaints from the rats. We should. <laughs> <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, if you guys want to amp her sound in here, turn up the amplifier. That's probably the best way to do it. Not any of these things. The amplifier that's on the ground over there. But good there, things going on in the world. The sound that's the best thing that's going on right now, right? So, a lot of good changes. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think that... Oh, did you see the Jamaica stuff? There's yeah. uh, stuff that's going on. The, the flag is the one I had. Remember we always said the flag I had for the... I don't remember. I have a flag for the 420. It says a doctor... A, a split day keeps the doctor away. Oh, that flag that you posted. Yeah. When you did it, I looked up and I laughed. It's the second time I have one at home on my wall. The same flag. I brought it on Don's um, yellow um, fire truck there last year. I was waving it. It's yeah. my Facebook uh, cover picture type deal. And it made me smile because the spliff of day keeps the doctor away. It does. It definitely does. Britt, I was going to ask you before... Um we st I was going to play a video soon here, but I wanted to talk to Britt before we do about 420, because we've got our 420 thing setting up in the city here. Um, April 20th, of course, is big 420 celebrations across Canada. And what, what do you guys actually have planned, Britt, at your 420? You guys have some speakers and stuff coming. Um, the sound was so low before that I'm not sure if you mentioned any of that, but <laughs> did you mention uh, Yeah, we actually have speakers coming from the Liberal Party. And they're sending one of their little activists over so that they can give us a speech, um, stay in contact with them about that. We also have a few people who are running for city councilor, and they're going to be uh, speaking at the event as well, which is great because you can see it from different aspects and aspects that you would never even think of. But I'm also working on getting someone from LEAD, which is Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Or LEAP, sorry. Um... Yeah, Leap is. Yeah, we should have a Leap speaker at our rally too. Um, I Most just, definitely. Yeah, here, hold on one sec. Um, yeah, we have. I just was talking to um, some people here in the city about speaking at our rally too. So it looks like we are, we're going to have some speakers lined up for ours that we didn't know about before as well. I don't know if I'm allowed to announce any of them yet though, but. Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you after. But <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to know first. <laughs> the secret inside connection. Um, I'm going to be the guy chattering on the side going, hey, no. <laughs> Are you speaking? You should speak, Johnny. I'll at our. speak. You should. I will. You have a lot to talk about. I do. Yeah. And I enjoy talking to the people who want to learn and listen. So, and most importantly, that's where we're at a boat and at a 420 event. People want to learn and listen. Hey man, there's like 30,000 people sitting around learning and listening to that one. That's great, and that's, that's why we got uh, Brittany here. She's doing the same thing, and if we have more of those, we can have a 420 in every town and every community. Every city I should have one. I know Manitoba, Mike so Mailman, they're doing it. They'll be doing it in Calgary. I mean, yeah. the, the, come on. It's like, it can be 420 everywhere. Grab a friend, sit down, puff away. I mean, they're not going to throw you in That's jail. all it takes, really. You just need a group. Yeah, and a group can make a difference. Well, there is a danger, though. I mean, we yeah, there is, there is a danger that, that any time you do that stuff, there's the chance that a cop might get in your face and try and do something to you. But uh, make sure you have your license on you, because you know there's about forty thousand of us out there that have them. That's definitely a help if you have a friend who's a medical marijuana user, and they can be there with their license to take the heat. Um, but yeah, part <laughs> of it is. Uh, um, so yeah. I don't know. I, I want, kind of want so to play. Much taking the heat, I say so much like, "Here, you got to educate them, right?" And, and in these small towns, like, <laughs> I know. Have problems with it's like, dude, like, well, uh, I'm off a farm and your kid. The, some you of know, these places, the cops don't even care if you're medical or not, too. No, that's yeah, they'll, and you know, a lot of, and obviously, even head shops are in danger. Places where traditionally you wouldn't think that a police officer would be able to get you in trouble, but. To Dana about that, and he was <laughs> just stating that they have uh, now went to the higher courts because they're saying that the municipalities can't make a law stating that you can't have bong shops. So the higher courts are now passing they can. The municipality, if they choose not to have that type of store in their community, they can now. So it's right back at you again. So it's going to get into that whole thing. Yeah. And, and well, and like, they're fighting the the 
basically anything to do with pot, the municipalities are now fighting it. There's some, like here exactly. in the city of Vancouver, that is the opposite, and our city councilors actually are supporting um, reforms and allowing, you know, allowing people to even possibly remain as medical marijuana growers after the law. Like uh, we had a city councilor who came out and said he thought that the home growing, taking away home growing, was a bad idea. And oh, we've had that. We've had yeah. totally. Had a lot of people talking about that. How's the weed in Brantford these days, Britt? It's not bad. I get a good variety. I like good. just getting a little bit of everything, making a salad. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Can you turn that knob up a little bit there? Just so I can hear a bit more. Nice, That's you got the a joint hoss. there. Mmm, mm, hoss. Well, I had to, had to bring it to you. Yeah, that's the stuff we were looking at last night. Yeah. So this is the, the thing posted on Instagram last night. It was just glistening with trichomes in the picture. You have like a way with your camera there, and that's just your little device that you're using. Is that right? Samsung. Your little Samsung does the whole trick. I know. And it's all Instagrammed. My movies on, 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 uh, on YouTube. Samsung. It's, it's nice, got a good camera. It's got a very nice camera. You know what? It comes a lot it to the guy holding the camera, 5. too. Because I put a background behind it. I take, you know, literally thousands of pictures to find that nice, nice one picture, right? So, I mean, if you like to take pictures and you got a good camera, it's pretty easy. And if you got great buds to take pictures of, then it's a one two punch. Then it's a great thing to share, right? Because people like to see it. And that's why I've actually started that just to share. You know, I shouldn't be hiding what I have. No, you definitely shouldn't. And you, the angle I see is out now there too. That's, that's next. Can you show that off? To I'm the gonna camera? get. Well, I'm gonna have a puff of that. Oh, you're Actually, gonna have pass a, oh, that here. Not, here. Okay. Here, you're gonna you're gonna give me a puff, and then we'll pass it down. Oh man, that's nice. Very tasty. And these are not raw rollies. They're a different paper. What are they? They're called Green Go. Remember these guys? They're no. beside you. Green Go, the natural, natural unbleached. The best totally chlorine free paper, it says. Green go. Pick them up, pick them up from the Netherlands. You know? Ah. Uh, so it's, uh, I like them. I got a you know, package of them, stuff like that. Brought them back and it was great. And who knows, maybe they'll be here soon. From the Netherlands. So, so we don't actually have them here at the store then. They're coming. Oh, you happen to know somebody? Yeah, I happen to know somebody. <laughs> oh, that's why we're talking about it already, are we? <laughs> Jeez, it's not it's not product placement. No. No, it's uh I like the paper. Thought you were just being honest and genuine there. I'm just joking. Oh, they're sturdy, are they? A raw would have just torn right in half. <laughs> nice. No, I just like them and I just I just, you know when you get into something you just hate. Rollies, zigzag white stuff like that, and you just gotta deal with them and stuff like that. And it's just like, wow, these work. And Those big, thick, like crazy zigzag blue, green, whatever they are. I got into like the zigzag orange. I like those for a little bit, and then of course, Isn't that always just a the raws. One? They're just a slim one. I think they're a little bit thicker. So I, I like the raws. I went to raw organics. They start running on the glue line. Then you got the elements. And the I OCBs. like elements. I like elements. Too. Elements. They make a nice paper. They're very clear, clean. But see, the whole thing is, is I got like so many different strains, so you actually have to have like 10 different kind of rolling papers. It's easier to tell them apart. Club, was, somebody in the chat saying Club was the best paper in the 60s. Club. Club, I don't know. Club. I, I, I would love to um, send us some, because we could try it. Do we have the Justin Trudeau rollies that we can start puffing with yet? I haven't actually seen an actual real pack in person yet. Oh, okay. I thought like Opus had a couple boxes to sent to him. Uh, yeah, well, he's in Toronto now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Well, there's always Greyhound. <laughs> Send Air, a, there's, 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 you know, Express Post. No, I think you can still order them from um, the website that Chris had going on there. Nice. Which was, uh, the name escapes me at the moment, but maybe somebody will put it in the chat. Um, yeah, VaporCentral.com will have more information. Or just VaporCentral.ca, whatever more it is. More stuff in the media around that, too, of course. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of, there was a ton of coverage about the JT rolling papers. Chris, I think uh, we, were, we might try and tune Chris in. I'm not sure if we will today. We might save that for next oh, week. Just something I was reading previously, recently, I think it was yesterday, the day before, uh, and people were telling Harper, like, we're giving up. Quick, stop, stop wasting money on this pot, pot campaign. Yeah. Like, really, it's the, it's the radio 
I haven't heard them as much anymore. Which ones? There's some radios that you're hearing in the beginning about the marijuana, and it was like, oh, it's bad for your kids. The way they were perceiving it, I'm not going to get right into it. Oh, they always have their crazy and, government and I'm not ads hearing against it. As much it. when I was hearing yeah. it all the time, it's like they died down on it. Like, they, well, well they, that's not working. They run these ads, but the statistics show that the ads are actually just advertisements for the drugs themselves. So, you know, they have on the SkyTrain, they have like a picture of ecstasy pills, a big, huge picture of these two happy, like, ecstasy pills, really colorful ones. And they, like, the kids are looking at that, and that's just an ad for ecstasy. That's not stopping kids from using it. It's advertising it, too. Usage increases when they do it. Huh. Well, that's why it they actually doesn't increase. marijuana so much right now. Yeah. All over the news. I, I think that it's just uh, a way that the government has the, spends their cash and does their thing. Maybe spends there's our money. Wait a second. Yeah. Our money, I mean, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it gives it to their friends. That's usually how it works. Government contractors. They have deals with the buddies in government. Mm. All right, well, I wanted to play a video here. This is a CTV video. Parents may defy new medical... Pa sorry, parents. I can't read it from here, even with my glasses. Patients may defy new medical marijuana laws. So, um, in Canada, on April 1st, all home growing will be made illegal. Nobody will be allowed to grow. No medical marijuana growers unless uh, you have a license to do it, to commercially manufacture it now. And all patients will have to order their pot through a mail order system. Yeah. How, do you, how are you liking that? Have you selected who you want to be your provider, John? Well, like I said on CTV News, I'm fucking scared as fuck of what they're doing to people like myself and all thousands of other Canadians that use cannabis as a medicine. And as everybody knows, I have my strain for my conditions, Medi Kush, I you know, grow organically, Medi One, stuff like that. They'll never be able to reduce what I use for my pain control. They won't be able to give me my bubble hashes or my dry sifts or my first bounces or <clears throat> I'm not gonna get out of bed in the morning and water my plants because really, I mean, I'm gonna be able to sleep in. And I mean, is that good for me? No, because my quality of life is now being taken away from me because of what's happening with, with Harper's little thing of putting commercial production facilities. Now what they're doing in Colorado, they have them and it's legalized and they got recreational and medical. Kind of makes sense, right? So, I mean, right. it's really, really... Wait, is this going this way? Yeah, it makes no difference. I'm getting really high now. Well, that's, this is the good stuff. It is very high. <laughs> I'm yeah. very high. I smoke pot. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, this is so, crazy I mean, like, that they're like, going to try like, and do this. It, and there's really crazy. no reason to do it. That's the thing that's so crazy about it. The reason behind it is what they're saying is we're, we're fire starters and we cause molds and stuff like that. But the reality is is they're looking at the big, the big growers that are taking advantage of the system. <clears throat> and then the small guys are using it as medicine and the ones paying the price for it, which is actually the really shitty part. And that's why we're in court. And that's why we're going to fight for it, right? And that's why there's so many different cases. Kurt's got three or four. We have the coalition being heard on the 18th. So you have yep. four different cases basically being held and different lawyers, different judges. John Conroy has uh, the constitutional challenge case or it's uh, woo, the lounge is getting <laughs> rowdy. Uh, yeah, woo, we woo, have woo. Oh, yeah, hey, we, I do too. I don't want to get Absolutely. into companies. Absolutely. No, they're bad with too. with Rogers this morning. They do suck. Yeah. But uh, John Conroy, that case is an interesting one. March 18th. Um, yeah. Representing three patients, a DG, a, a veteran, and then another. Um, all standing, all growing their medicine. Yeah. One's in law enforcement and grows for his, his girlfriend and stuff like that. So, I mean, you get different things that are going on. So, it'll be, you know, it, it's going to be a very interesting time. Of course, we're not going to hear the decision probably till March 31st at like 3 p.m. So, I mean, what are we all doing? Like, I mean, I got plants growing. Am I cutting them down? Um, you know what? I'm growing my medicine. So, what, what, what's next, right? And there's also, as part of it, there's an injunction on the actual... Um, oh, we also have the injunctions. That's, that's where we're... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the, crazy times. it's been released. All, there's papers already available. 1,662 pages are available on John Conway's website. You can also go to the MMR Coalition Against Repeals website, and you'll find all the information. We have Facebook pages. Uh, we'll have a booth at 420. So yep. um, the complimentaries of, of course, uh, Cannabis Culture and everybody here. They're uh, helping us out there. <laughs> so we're going to have a... We'll be able to, you know, if you want to come by and ask some questions, there'll be some people at the booth guaranteed and giving out some information on next steps because 
first we're going to try and put an injunction against it, then we're going to try and stop them from taking away our license, period. Our right to grow our medicine. And that's what it really comes down to. And our right to grow, period. I mean, who wants to grow vegetables? And, you know, some people, I'm already talking to people, they want to start their, their tomatoes early and stuff like that. If things mm. go how they're going, you're not going to be able to grow nothing. <laughs> yeah. You won't be able to start growing tomatoes like a lot of people do, like the guy that Kurt represented in, in Mission, who was starting his cucumbers. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, no, it's crazy. There, there's a lot of stake, and Canadians really got to take a better look at it. It's not just about the marijuana growing. It's about, it's about them taking away your right to grow. Like, really, there's a lot more to it. And maybe if you start thinking about that, you know, you get to your the other people who aren't really looking at it in that factor, right? So, And all of these excuses they're using, the fires and everything, they're bullshit. I mean, it's really, there's no, hey, there's no evidence fires, of this but stuff. I, how, how many restaurants have burned down because of improper disposals of things or bad wiring? A lot more than medical marijuana right. places. That's our damn I would shot. say there's probably less. Kirk thinks, or we were talking before, there might be evidence that there's actually, if people are paying attention to the electrical, there's less of a chance of a fire than, say, a regular home that's not paying attention to anything at any time. So, or things that are just run down. So in a lot of places, there might actually be an um, increase in, or sorry, uh, the opposite direction, a decrease in fires in medical marijuana homes compared to normal homes. Well, just like when I uh, had CTV News and Peter Geringer said, he goes, wow, he says, like, I've never seen anything. I don't like even it. know what it is. <laughs> done properly. Yeah. What's that, Brett? You still there, Brett? We're kind of getting choppy back there, it looks like. I see some pixels. I'm just showing off this, bud. <laughs> We're just getting passionate uh -oh. about it. It says poor connection. Oh, there you are. We got your back. <laughs> so you have, where's your two little yeah, friends? Yeah, I can't hear you too much. Uh-oh, she's breaking up. That's a shame. Well, we should probably play this video that's been sitting here. I wanted to see this one. It's on the subject we're talking about. Some patients um, have decided that they're going to defy the laws and continue to grow. I think probably a whole lot of them. Well, is it going to turn into a witch hunt that everybody uh -huh. says, right? Yeah. We have Langley trying to pass a bylaw here in BC that if you're caught growing a day after it, it's a $10,000 fine a day. So it's just a way of like, if, 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 a, if a, uh, a guy that's uh, maybe on a pension or, or is being seriously injured or could be... Uh, an old veteran who's got some plants and all of a sudden he's caught on day April 20th, 20 days later, and he's going to get a $200,000 fine? Like, who how, comes up with these numbers? Yeah, how like, can, can they, you believe that? How could they even possibly do how that? Can you, and now, so what, they're going to take away your house now? Huh? Oh, that's probably Be Because you got five plants, you continue hey, to grow somebody, your medicine? Somebody's got to fill those jails. They're increasing with their... Well, that's buddies. those... There's a lot of stuff going on. It's scary times, 100%. I mean... What do you do? A lot of people don't care. And then there's people like myself. I mean, I got way too much to lose. I mean, I, my health, my home, my quality of life. That's why I say I'm scared. Like, it's not like I really have too many choices here right now. Like, right. legally, um, it's not like I'm not in the, in the media and it's not like they don't know who I am, right? So, well, and that's the thing. And that's the whole thing. I You're mean, marked, I, I they could come straight for you, right? Oh, I'm, doors are open. Yeah. Why not? They check out every room. I could care less. You, I guess you'd be the uh, one of the court cases going through. See, that's the thing is a bunch of people are going to get arrested and charged, but then once it goes to court, everything should be, you know, I, don't, I think the judges are going to be like, this is too brutal. It, it, it really is all going to depend, so it will be too brutal on, say, someone like myself, and I end up in court, and they're saying, oh, yeah, uh, no judge is going to put me in jail. Like, really, I'm probably, right. this is what, I, I mean, it's, it's truly my medicine, but now let's say right. we get the guy that's got the sore arm that's got 50 lights and he's got 30 pounds in his garage. Yeah. Like, we have to take a look at really what they're after, and they're not really after the patients. They're after these ones that are not growing for, for medicine. They're growing for money, and, and that's just the reality behind it. And that's hopefully that the system will change and maybe we'll be able to get our medicine back and hey, uh, we're looking at legalization in the next three to five years, if not sooner. So, I mean, just some tough times right now. Yeah, man, for sure. All right. We well, talked about we'll, that before we'll be able off to camera. We'll our teeth and bear through the damn thing. But, yeah, who knows? I mean, maybe it, it could be a while with this conservative government, and it could be, um, 
a while even before somebody like Trudeau gets in who's able to change anything. And even once he does get in, say Trudeau does get in, it's not just one, two, three that it's going to all of a sudden pot's going to oh, be no, illegal. You, you can't um, no. change that. First, we've got to look at Bill S-10. Yeah. Now gotta you got to overturn law. those laws. And you have to, years to convince that law. You got to convince the whole House and Senate to do it, too. And the conservatives have stacked the Senate all massively. The conservatives are still going to have a lot of power in play once they do lose. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, once they are out of power. Yeah, they will be out of power sometime soon, hopefully. But, but they will still have some power because there's going to be small towns that still get voted in conservative and they're going to have their voice. And Oh, uh, yeah, we lost Brit, I guess. Um, I can try and call her back one time here. Let's see if it works. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But while we're doing that, we can also uh, play this video. So why don't we do that? So this is Patients May Defy New Medical Marijuana Laws on CTV. And uh, it's just a couple minutes long. We'll be back in a sec. So here, before you do that, go ahead. Like this is Joanne's Garden of Relief, medicinal marijuana prescribed by a doctor for her severe I love arthritis. So many it's keeping her pain free. Now. I got rid of the cane, my knees feel a lot more stable, but I'm managing without pain pills, which is just amazing. She turns the buds into oil. I take this once a day. For two years, Health Canada has let her grow her own cannabis, but come March 31st, she'll have to destroy it all and buy only from federally licensed producers. What cost pennies a day will instead cost her $2,800 a month. I know I can't afford to put that type of money out to be able to access medical marijuana. But I know that I don't want to live without the oil. It's made such a difference in the quality of my life. This lawyer has filed a constitutional challenge to be heard March 18th, saying the government must give patients prescribed marijuana a choice. If you can do it for yourself, why should you not be able to do so if you can't afford what is being provided there in the market? And He says more than 60% of them are on disability, like Edith, a cancer survivor with a painful bone disorder. It's well controlled with homegrown cannabis oil. Buying it from a licensed grower will cost her $3,800 a month. I'm scared to death that when this law changes, that I lose my ability to care for myself. Some patients fear they'll have to return to prescription painkillers that they say didn't work. Others say they'll defy the law and continue to grow, risking arrest for trying to control pain the way Ottawa's let them for many years. Avis Favreau, CTV News, Toronto. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I guess you're one of these patients who are going to be defying things. And uh, that's just the way it's going to be. There's going to be a lot of people out there. A lot of people are saying there's absolutely there. no way they're going to stop growing their medicine. And I got guys coming into the store today that are downsizing. They're buying grow tents, buying a track, getting one ball. They're like, they can't. They're, so they're going to they're gonna look at law. And they're going to grow five plants and... Like, really, what cop's going to kick in your door if you got five plants in a grow tent and you got a bulb on a track you're growing your medicine, right? Yeah. And when you get to court, they're going to laugh at you it. You can grow out. five pretty big plants, too, right? Well, people are saying, oh, I'm going to get 5,000 wall bulbs. I say, well, then, then you're getting <laughs> into the whole light, reach, the whole smart meters, and then they're mm. going to be, you know, they're trying Ooh, to get away. Which one is this? That would be the one that uh, you just gave That's me. That's the one. Angola. Uh-huh. Ah. Mm, okay. And we got Britt back. Hi, Britt. Hi. Hi. What do you got there in that baggie? Today. What's in your baggie? Oh. Is that a can of cap? What is that? Yeah, I made them myself. <laughs> oh, nice. It just so happens that hmm. the funnel I had Here comes, perfectly uh, fit. <laughs> this is shopper. Uh-oh, she's kind of breaking up a bit. Sorry, Britt, you're breaking up a little that. bit. Damn, Hi. internet. 
Oh, there you are again. <laughs> Hi, hemp seed. Hi. Um, I'm just lighting a joint of Angola. Hello. Get in here. Ah, no. Wow. Is that what you were doing today? Yeah. Mel was shaving beards in her class today? Yeah. Except I picked a guy with like very minimal facial hair. Oh. I cheated. I was like... You cheated you, with a guy I'm with like, no facial hair. like 14 years old even though you're 32. I'm like, I'll use you. Mm. <laughs> All patchy and blonde. I'm like... <laughs> Taste that one. Oh, man. How are you guys? We're fabulous. You know, we're I'm talking about the good that. old... Uh, Oh yeah, what about the children? Cannabis stuff that we love so much. Discussing this whole thing that the government's trying to do to You're people. You're getting some love in the cannabis. chat, Mel. People love you. What's up? Hey guys. <laughs> of course they love her. I love her. you guys too. But yeah, so, about our best friend night. Oh, yeah, me and Mel are watching Robocop tonight. The new Robocop. Because uh, I forced Mel to watch the original Robocop <laughs> a long time ago, the Paul Verhoeven version of it. You yeah, were like, I don't want to watch it. I'm like, no, you have to watch it. Yeah. Terminator. No, it's yeah. Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Oh, you hadn't seen all the classics. What you the show me, you the show hell? me the classics. I show you everything. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, you do show me a lot of new shit. Amazing movie. <laughs> oh, man. Brittany, have you seen the new Robocop movie or the old one? I've seen the old one. Uh oh. It looks For like sure, our technology is failing. I haven't oh, seen the new one. Hempseed needs the microphone. Yeah, you can share this one. Technology. Here, just take it out of there. Yeah, you can pull it right out. One day I'll come down there and be on Mel's not going through my jar of cushions, and she can't find... Well, she yeah. actually grabbed the Medi. Look at that. She grabbed the best one out of the bunch without oh, even knowing. Oh, very nice. Seven in there, and she grabs the best one. Oh, she knows what she's doing. She knows exactly what she's doing. What's up, guys? Mm. Wait, which way is this going now? Pass it this Another way? Another high Friday? What's yeah. What we doing on Fridays? <laughs> Don't we do that every single day, though? No, I medicate. So, time. do a lot of people? You're Mel. You're in a makeup class. That's what you're taking at school, Indeed. like aesthetics. Or explain Not to people aesthetics. exactly what it is. Um, I'm taking fashion so, and film makeup artistry. I've been a certified makeup artist since like 2008, 2009. So that was just kind of like the beauty side of things, like bridal, basic headshot photography, stuff like that. But I've always dreamed of doing prosthetics and creature design and stuff like that. So I took the plunge and decided to go back to school. So right now I'm learning headshot makeup, which I already know because I already work with two headshot photographers in Vancouver. Um, so yeah, I'm just pretty much waiting for like when we start doing prosthetics and out of kit effects and stuff like that. I wanted to ask, are, are there a lot of pot smokers in your class? There are a decent amount of pot smokers. Every time I come in on a Friday, they're always like, Mel, you fucking reek. <laughs> Give me some. <laughs> I had one substitute teacher and I actually had a bag of weed in my purse and I opened up my purse and she's like smells like sharing oh <laughs> I was like I'll share with you after class ah, so there you go I guess part of the creative I process so thank you I had everybody a teacher, smokes weed I had a teacher who go. was like against it luckily she got fired however huh. um she was like she made a comment about my Facebook. I asked her what we do for career development and she's like you know I make sure you don't have any pot shit all over the internet and I was just like uh, was that a jab at me uh, and my medicinal use and she okay. just like kind of ignored it and then my best friend he we were doing like a mm -hmm. decade trend thing and he was doing bullshit. the 60s so he's like the only headband I have has pot leaves all over it and I was like well that's perfect it's the 60s everyone was smoking pot in the 60s and she like totally kiboshed it she's like no no pot shit no uh, so, well, so there's stigma against it still. Yeah. There's some people who don't like However, it. However, I had planned to sometimes. do a, I had planned to do like a full pot project, like for my airbrushing final. I was gonna do like the Garden of Whedon or uh, like Poison Weed V or something like that to piss her the fuck off. But she was gone, and uh, I did my crack China doll, which was fucking amazing. Very cool. Wow, that is a good idea for one though. Garden of Whedon. I like well, that. my girlfriend and I, we're going to be at 420 Cannabis Day, or yeah, 420 Cannabis Day this year, we're going to be doing airbrush. So if like you want like a stencil of a pot leaf or something airbrushed on your face or body paint, we're going to be doing that. Cool. And it's all going to go from like $5 to a little thing to like 24 Do you guys have a booth? Um, I'm pro probably going to be doing it beside my booth at work. Oh, good. I'm just going to like hijack a class. He has, like, he has like two or three booths, so I'm just going to hijack a section. Oh, there you go. 
There you go. And I don't think he cares because he released something. And if you don't, we can always... Uh, Say what? Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, there, we know somebody around who can get you a booth. Somebody. Johnny oh my God. can get you one. Johnny's got mad pull. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Oh, we could. I, so there's a couple different videos I wanted to watch here. There's a video of some of Bubble Man's 2008 macro photographs. There's some cool stuff back from 2008. Now this is it's older stuff, but. Um, it's pretty dope. Um, it's got... What's that, Tom? Um, yeah, that looks good. Tom's... This is Tom's... Uh, he's flying with Marius on this one. Um, but see how the crosshair's outside of it on that one side? The green crosshairs have to kind of go on the... So they're actually... Yeah, a little bit on the inside. So they're... At, yeah, exactly. No, it still was over the edge. It was still over one edge. Yeah. We lost Mel for a second. That's okay. She's like, she's hopping. She's hopping like a bunny rabbit. She's hopping. You want that? Oh, that's good. Oh, here. Let's say that out loud. I said I was bouncing and my tits were insane. That is all. (laughs) Yeah. They will be more. Oh, just wait. Just wait till they're man made. (laughs) <laughs> oh. Man made. It's gonna be fabulous. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe set that back and then we'll play we should show those ones off. Let's play those ones first. Right to the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, now we can both share. Both oh no, share. were you playing it? Were you actually playing the video? Oh you're playing it. Oh shit, I didn't realize you're playing it. Oh okay. Sorry, go ahead. And we were talking over top of it? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's cool. We'll go ahead and play it. Yeah, you can go back. Actually, it's okay. I didn't realize they were actually seeing so that. That's cool. Gone, you know, no, that's, that's awesome. About, you know, it's, it's okay to look at them stuff. twice. I just moved. They're so beautiful pictures. Moved. I just moved. I really like fabulous. them. And I didn't get to look at them the first time either. I thought they were just it playing in the background awesome. on that screen. I have heat and and that's, water Bubble and Man's got a bunch of stuff. Uh-oh, I think you did jump ahead now there. I'm so excited. So it's just like you have freedom. Yes. There you go. And it's, like, and it's not like I was <laughs> There's lots of them. Anyone, and Bubble Man has like a so major like collection of these room. photos. Like, I locked everything. Oh, you guys are talking. It was like Sorry, that's okay. Oh, no, we were just discussing with the crowd over here about Mel moving and stuff. You guys are randomly talking about stuff over there. Well, here, don't talk in the mic then. <laughs> so we need to do. And we were trying. Could you turn this? Okay, so we tried. You guys having some fun stuff? Here, pass that over here. <laughs> oh, you can pass that instead. <laughs> Mm. But look at the Bubble Man pictures we were looking at. Oh, I know. I've, uh, I've watched them. They're that one's epic right there. There's so many. Right? He's you just got take some a look. super macro shots there, like that one. Oh, killer. Totally awesome. Um, I'm not sure. No, I think he's Here's using a like a Mark fact. two or three on that. Bubble Man was one of the first people I met in BC on my first day. And he gave me a bunch of hash. And he's like, here's five-year-old cured bubble hash. Enjoy. And it lasted me like forever. And I was just like, forever since then, I'm like, I love he you. He makes some mighty fine hash, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, he's able to extract the resin, the grower. Like Mark always said, always comes down to the grower. And I have a balcony now, so I can start making, like, hash and oil and shit. Hash and dry sift. Man, those trichomes are so crazy looking. So if, you know how if tasty that's they foreign are? to anybody... I actually have some over there in my bag. I'm sure most of the people watching this show know what a trichome is, but... It's, uh, it's really close up. It's, they're like little mushrooms that grow all over the plant that contain all the goodies, all the active ingredients. And cannabinoids. All the cannabinoids. 60 different kinds. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. The most efficacious ones are... And that's the only place THC. they exist. Just in the tips just, of those. Just trichomes. in the tips. So that's what they always say that, you know, like what I say of what Health Canada, they can't supply me with my medicine because I only harvest the glandular heads. I use the trichome. And uh, that's what I use for my medicine is, is fresh frozen. Like I, so I do videos with Mark, and everybody knows that, and that's what I've been using quite consistently for my medication for a long time now, and, and I get quite good pain relief. Mark is Bubble Man, of course. Okay, Bubble Man, yes. And, yeah, I mean, wow, that's... Yeah, he's got a lot of great shots. And Bubble Man and I wrote a piece together called Inside the Trichome, 
Yes. It's available on Cannabis Culture. It's got some of these macro shots, and it kind of has a bit of the science behind how the trichomes themselves work, how the, uh, the terpenes are developed and they come down the stem and it's all developed into the actual cannabis. Into the mate, and, and then it comes up. Yeah, I, I've, I, I would. It's an interesting I process. can picture it, uh, and I'll probably say things wrong, so I'm just not going to, but you've you got know, different parts of the head, so in the bottom of the head is where. Actually, the cannabinoids are produced up the stalk, and then once they hit a certain part, it's a UVB ray light that actually penetrates through the trichome head that develops the THC and the cannabinoids. Yeah. And once they start developing more, it creates a resin on the inside of the glandular head, and then at some points it starts turning amber, and that's when, of course, everything starts more developed. So, I mean, it all comes down to the UVB ray light. I mean, nutrients don't grow trichomes. Nutrients grow the plant. It's the UVB ray light that's really producing. It's interesting. I take a good look at it. But, I mean, of course, uh, everybody's trying to grow trees, and I like to grow the little trichome. Yeah, man. As you can see, it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Yeah, they're quite... There's some crazy well, shots in that selection, too. Right no, yeah... Our they cam, they can't see us. They can only hear us. We can just, we well, can talk can about us. it. Now we're back. Can see us. Hi. Hi, Pod TV. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So check out uh, BC Bubble Man. BC Bubble Man's world. <clears throat> BC Bubble Man is um, his Instagram at. Oh, yeah. At, at BC, BC Bubble, Bubble Man. Man. And YouTube is Bubble Man's World. Bubble Man's World on YouTube. And you can find Bubble Man's videos on Pot TV as well. Say, don't you have uh, yeah. Bubble Man's World on uh, Pot TV now as well. Yeah, he's got some great videos as well. Got some Puff Wednesdays. And we got making hash and yeah. making dry sift. And he's got his. Uh, all the hash making tips and then from that stemmed on to Facebook pages like uh, Team Dry Sift and uh, Bubble Hash and Water Extraction Techniques and that one's really big on Facebook too. So yeah, it was a big great one. information on, yeah. on all the social How media to's. now. How to's. We just want to discuss it and educate one another and everybody's got their different tips and it's really cool what's going on out there now. So definitely jump on board. Hemsey, do you want a bong rip? I would love a bong rip. Out of Duchess? Okay. okay. Oh, she's getting right up for it too. It's coming right around. Oh, that's cool. We haven't got, I haven't gotten stoned from any place yet. Oh, we we're going to have to christen We'll Chris break in its virginity. Nice. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, Mel just moved into a new place. It is fabulous. It's housewarming night tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, the microphone. There, he's got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm holding my phone. Okay, I'm holding phone. Don't read the phone. Oh, I'm not reading. <laughs> so what is she smoking? I don't know. I it, was it from there? Was it the Angola? Is it the 101? I mean, the audience wants it's to know. It's Angola. It's not Angola. 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 Totally Angola. What's the lineage behind the Angola? Um, that I don't know. Is that from from our Fennel? Uh, I bl no. No. No, it's not mm. actually. Okay. No, not from our friend Al. Just yeah, it's 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 something nice. Um, although I mean, it's it's definitely from the same sort of posse as that crew, but um, it's not actually Al the Alchemist grow or anything. I don't think so. Anyway, maybe I could be wrong, but new things, great stuff. What about you? You want a bong rip, there, Johnny B? <laughs> yes. Angola. Uh, um, it's gonna be Angola. Angola rips. I don't have any beeline handy, so I mean, I gotta. Oh, you're gonna you have to use the butane uh, bic. I actually have. I'm, I'm gonna stay away from the bic. Oh, you don't like the bic? Well, I, you know what? There's just, you know, new things. Oh, I like the bic. Um, Tom, would you set up the next video on there for us? Uh, which is the. I wanna get into this whole Mexican drug kingpin, El Chapo. So they've arrested now the leader of the Sinaloa cartel the Mexican drug kingpin. So there's a lot of um, crazy talk these days about the DEA and the Sinaloa cartel because <laughs> basically the DEA has been working with the Sinaloa cartel for a decade plus, allegedly, um, according to... It's kind of hard with the sore neck. Oh, yeah? Does that kill I managed it. No, actually, it gave me some relief. Oh, good. The weed in there did. 
The it's bong was causing a little bit of pain. The medicine. weed gave me the relief, so it was kind of like an awesome thing, huh? It's like, oh, oh wow. There you go. Uh, if you're, are you done with it? Oh, I'm, I'm going to pass it over. I'll take that. And uh, I'll load myself one now. And yeah, and then after this, we'll watch some of the um, American propaganda. Is this, what is this stuff? Um, let me smell it first. Oh. Oh, what is it? <laughs> I like how you said that. Um, I think that's the sour. Oh. All right, I don't care what it is. I'm going to smoke it. Oh, yeah, here. Let's get rid of that. We lost Brit. Ma- Mel's again. just got the bag of chips and take them in there, but we're going to encourage her to actually bring those to the table. Because we are so, stoners and we all are, we're all and we were having a problem with the uh, connection. Catch up barbecue on the house. Lay's barbecue. Is that product? Is that I'm product hit. placement? We got Lay's going yeah. on. It's, they didn't pay us anything. That's why I put it label down. I would love for them to send us a crate. If you contact the U.S. division, they'll probably do it. Yeah. Chips. Yeah? I'm good. You're good? No, yeah, not yet. Um, in a sec. There's Duchess. All right, yeah, so we will play this video. Now, this video is from ABC News. So these guys, the, of course, there's not going to be any mention of, uh, unless, I mean, I could be putting my foot in my mouth because I didn't actually watch to the very end of the clip, but, but from what I saw, and I'm, that's full disclosure there, didn't watch to the very end, but uh, and th- this looked like a real propaganda piece from ABC News, just, you know, it's more of this American news style, it's just sometimes brutal for me to watch it, um, but yeah, of course, what they should be saying is that the U.S. government has been working directly with this, it's just been, you know, published in m- multiple newspapers, um, there's a, extensive evidence going back years showing that the United States government is the one actually bringing in the drugs to the United States, cocaine, all kinds of other drugs, um, through the Sinaloa cartel, these exact guys. Do you see my surprise on my face? Yeah, I know you're not surprised. Yeah. But uh, some people might be surprised. I'd say average American Joe probably would be surprised at that because they don't know. And... In my discussions with some people in the marijuana community in the United States at places like Marijuana Policy Project, they say that no American journalist will touch this story. They're probably scared. Alex Jones. Yeah, Alex Jones will touch it. (laughs) He's all over that shit. Yeah, Alex is all over it, but unfortunately, because Alex is such a nut for a lot of the time, he uh, tends to turn people off and just, you know, that's the way he, I like Alex a lot, but... uh, Well, it's it's a new, new... It's hard to take it's a new generation seriously. that's going on, all right? So education right now is mainstream. So, I mean, really, people are taking a better look at it. Like, yeah, I think people take will a look eventually what's going on, right? find out. But we just got to help promote that right now. So let's, uh, let's watch this uh, ABC News piece about El Chapo's arrest. Crazy. Yeah, the arrest of a Mexican drug lord whose reach was far and wide. Ouch. He was cruel, unforgiving in his ways, and one of the main destinations for his drug trade, the United States. Tonight, Joaquin Guzman El Chapo, as he's called, seen right here during his reign of terror. And tonight here, this is what he looks like now, captured as the sun came up this morning in a resort where he was staying. Investigators say it's believed Mexican authorities were helped by American intelligence. In fact, in this country, he was a wanted man, too, in Chicago. He'd been labeled public enemy number one because his drug supply was infiltrating that city. Tonight, we have team coverage here, beginning with ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas, who is live in Washington. Pierre, good evening. Good evening, David. Tonight, U.S. law enforcement is hailing the arrest of the top drug dealer in the world after hunting him for more than a decade. There he is, the man known as El Chapo a.k.a. Shorty, who runs the world's largest drug cartel, in handcuffs, surrounded by Mexican military officers. Joaquin Guzman Lira, the leader of the Sinaloan Mexican drug cartel, finally back in custody after 13 years on the run since bribing his way out of prison. How powerful El Chapo's cartel is believed responsible for an estimated 25% of the drugs entering the U.S. Marijuana, cocaine, heroin. Tens of thousands may have died in the U.S. and Mexico because of him. 
through overdoses and associated murders. Sources tell ABC News El Chapo was arrested at 6.40 a.m. this morning by Mexican Marines acting on intelligence provided in part by American Immigration and Drug Enforcement agents. He was arrested on the fourth floor of this hotel in a resort town 630 miles from Mexico City. No shots fired, the world's most infamous criminal caught in seconds. Univision conducted a year-long investigation of El Chapo's life, aired by Fusion, our sister network. Chapo Guzman is like the Osama bin Laden of drug trafficking. El Chapo is part of a network of cartels shipping drugs by the hundreds of tons into the U.S. Hey, dude, we got what you were looking for. Yes, we did. I saw it firsthand at this southwest border checkpoint. This truck of furniture was actually hiding more than a ton of neatly packaged marijuana. There is so much drug traffic coming from Mexican cartels, it has to be destroyed at secret locations like this. The impact on America direct. In Chicago, El Chapo was named public enemy number one, an infamous title not used since the gangster Al Capone. His cartel allegedly responsible for 80% of the drugs in Chicago. El Chapo, so rich, he made the Forbes magazine billionaires list. This is a major blow to the cartels. El Chapo was so important, but sources tell me it won't likely be fatal. His organization is so huge and entrenched. David? Pierre Thomas leading us off tonight. Pierre, thank you. I want to bring in investigative reporter Mariana Vanzella from our cable partner Fusion tonight because, Mariana, we know you've reported extensively on El Chapo. We heard from Pierre's reporting that he was responsible for 80 percent of the drugs, perhaps even more, on the streets of Chicago. Why did he target that city? Chicago has the fourth or fifth largest Mexican population outside of Mexico, and it's also the ideal place to sort of distribute uh, drugs across the Midwest here in the United States. We saw Pierre travel through those tunnels. I know you have as well, but mm -hmm. you've pointed out before that he was extremely creative even beyond the tunnels and how he got drugs into the U.S. Absolutely. I mean, catapults, submarines. He was business minded. He was creative and really inventive. And that's some of the ways that he brought drugs here to the United States. And in fact, he used that creativity a little more than a decade ago to escape prison. Yes, he escaped from prison in a laundry bag. He used some of his connections inside the prison to escape from prison in a laundry bag. And he managed to stay free for 13 years until now. For 13 years until tonight, Mariana Vanzella from our cable partner Fusion tonight. Mariana, thank you. And, of course, the team there covering this extensively this evening. And one more note tonight, reaction coming in from the White House issuing this statement, quote, we congratulate the Mexican government on the capture. This is a significant achievement in our shared fight against organized crime, violence, and drug trafficking. All right. All right. So we're back, boys and girls. Was. Hello. Oh, whoa. Hello, knock, that was knock, something that was new. Wow. Well, really I didn't realize. I did that. Oh. Um, I'm going to knock into everything. I'm ex like, totally Boop. extraordinarily high right now. Oh, we've been smoking some one really good right weed now. today. No, just weed. It's pretty good. It's I don't know what's weed. making. It's organic. I've been grown. getting really high on the shows lately. Like at Mega Ill last week, I was super high. Infused pizza. You haven't been there? Yeah, it's fun. You haven't been to Mega Ill? I think after the show, we should all pound the car and we head to Megal. We could go to Megal. Want to go to Megal? I'll drive. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. What time do you get at school? It's open till midnight. Is it? Hey. We could go there later. I have my own microphone. Yeah. She missed then. No, I'm scared. Midnight Megal? Midnight Megal. Pizza. Infused pizza at midnight. I could go to my place and set up my apartment really stoned and watch Robocop. It'll be fabulous. That's a good idea. Um, cool. So there's one more. What is nice to be young. Right now, anyway. 518. Hey, not bad. 518. Um, so it's really choppy. I wanted to bring Chris Goodwin on the show today to talk about the JT Rollies, but um, it's so, been so choppy with the internet on our connection, and we have a lot of stuff going on. I don't think it's smart to do it right on this one. I think we should save that for next week. We'll bring Goodwin on to talk about the JT Rolling Papers next week. Um, you looked at oh, me yeah, like the rolling papers. Yeah. yeah, you should. If you can add an image of the rolling papers from the desktop, it's sitting on the desktop um, uh, somewhere there. Yeah, yeah, that would be how you do it. Yeah, so at least we can show them off because it's really cool. These uh, rolling rolling papers that Chris made actually at Vapor Central. You can find out tons of information about these rolling papers on the front page of Cannabis Culture. There's. Um, yeah, nice. There's the rolling papers. 
JT. So this was a conservative scam to try and go after Justin with the smear about being a pot supporter. And it just backfired in their face. Yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, how it backfired. <laughs> Don't lose your teeth on that one. Schmack. <laughs> um, wow, that smells really good, too. Wait, what'd you just roll up there? This is the Medicush. The Medicush, oh. This is the jar. There was one bud in this jar. Mel reached in and grabbed it. Like, that it was, was like the, the one. First one. She's like, oh, I'm going to grab that one. She went for the good stuff. Medicush, yeah, you've uh, we've published an article about the Medicush strain on cannabis culture that you uh, were the author of. Yes, it was. And uh, you took some really nice photos for that too. With my Samsung. Yeah, with your Samsung, <laughs> that crazy little device you have. Um, yeah, so I guess the last video we have is what? Yeah. Oh, the DE agent one. Yeah. So not only are DEA agents running or helping the Sinaloa cartel run all the drugs into the United States. Um, some people like David Malmo Levine would say they're taking a more active role uh, and actually that people like George W. Bush, or not George W., but sorry, George H. W. Bush uh, are the actual drug kingpins of the universe, the biggest, pot, or the biggest cocaine and pot and other drug dealers in the world. Mostly who, who, who was president in the in the late sixties, early seventies? Um, well, they're in the late sixties, early seventies. Richard Nixon. I think Greg, we should bring him on here and we have his opinion. Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. Wasn't that the start of the cocaine cartels back in those days? Oh yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, right? Been, I'm they've just, already I'm been just... busted with Iran Contra, so they, you know. Back in the day, they were actually, there was a whole uh, fiasco where they were found to be dealing in drugs and guns and trading to unsavory partners overseas and for basically selling drugs to fund their overseas wars. And they've been doing that for a long time. That's how they do this stuff. <laughs> Sell a lot of drugs and then you can go and invade countries overseas and the taxpayer doesn't have to be bothered with it. The Congress doesn't have to be bothered with it. You can have your secret armies. That drug money makes a lot of cash. So it makes sense. Malmo Levine is currently working on like an extensive piece about uh, the history, the secret history of He's working on with the Dana. American drug war. What's that? Is it, oh, is it, I know Dana was doing something. I was just talking to him now. They're getting into a deep history of it. Dana is getting into a deep Canadian history yeah, Canadian of the drug history. war. Yeah, Canadian history. Thank you. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. And actually, right now on the front page of Cannabis Culture, I just posted this article last night. Um, Dana's first installment of his history of Canada and cannabis. So, yeah, yeah it's really, it's on the front page right now, CC. It's uh, quite a comprehensive piece he's working on. This is just part one. Yeah, just, so, that's what I, just, I was chatting with him. That's why we said, like, oh, wow, maybe that's so it's similar, but of course different. Yeah, so we're well, Canadian David's, and David's working on more of a big David's international. David's is a little different than that one, yeah. It'll be intense. Um, It'll be so detailed. Yeah, Dana's is a super history going back to before the War of 1812 and you know, how, about how cannabis was founded on, you know, people were bringing cannabis into Canada as far back as the like 1600s or something. So, yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. What are we hitting up next here? Um, so this one actually, this is a, a Reason piece from Reason TV about a DEA agent who, or a former DEA agent, who is now joining the marijuana industry as a consultant or whatever he's doing. He's becoming part of, you know, what's going on in Colorado and Washington and these places. Everybody's going to want a piece of this, even former law enforcement officials. When marijuana is legal, everybody's going to want It's already chunk. changing. That's why we have the, what I was talking about, the first public company in Canada that went public two days ago. Yeah. Next gen, and it's involved with the industrial hemp and medical marijuana industry in North America. And they're talking about more funding these big, bigger legal marijuana facilities across North America and what's happening worldwide. So it's, it's, it's definitely changing the world right now. There's a lot of stuff going on, totally. Yeah, definitely, man. It's uh, nonstop. The world keeps spinning. Hey, I keep cannabis, I would say the. A uh, green plant will change oh, the world. Thanks. You know what? Cannabis, that one plant is going to change the way the whole world thinks, eats, medicates, 
lives we can make concrete we can make clothing there's there's just so much about it that we're just going to start stepping into it's going to be exciting actually i kind of look forward to it yeah a whole new frontier yeah there we published uh we aggregated a piece from yahoo finance about uh people saying that the biggest investment of the next decade is going to be marijuana investments will be huge big returns and it's just going to be a big industry all around it's going to be blossoming because you can basically take any kind of business and weedify it i keep saying this anything can be a weedy business look you got a pizza place make them weed pizzas you can make any kind of food pizza we food got weed infused I mean, lemonades kind of weed and iced teas and Everything that goes barbecue sauces, kind of hot sauces, weedified. So, so everything. It's it is definitely it is, it's the next generation. It's it's what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> so huh? let's see. It so is. It's like it's chunk. like everybody's like with peace pot. But I mean, it's it's actually peace and pot, hundred percent. The world knows it now. Yeah, I hope so. We'll see how it goes. Stephen Harper doesn't seem to know it yet, but... Yeah, we're going to catch him puffing sooner or later. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, throw on this uh, video from Reason TV. DEA agent joins marijuana industry. The more law enforcement officers that are willing to acknowledge prohibition is wrong, the better off society is going to be. After Washington state voters legalized recreational marijuana, a brand new million dollar industry opened up. And while there are a lot of changes that are still being worked out in the state, one of the biggest may be drug enforcement agents going to work in the private sector. We sat down with Patrick Moan, a former special agent for the DEA. He's been in law enforcement for over 15 years, but left to work for a company called Privateer Holdings, a private equity firm that invests in cannabis. Why did you approach Privateer Holdings in the first place? What were you looking to do here? Why this big move? Well, I was uh, considering a number of job opportunities. I had a pretty fulfilling career at the EA, but I was uh, ready for some new challenges. And I wasn't looking in this industry in particular, but it was one particular industry that, that, in, that uh, interested me. What do you see the future for private holdings? What are you going to invest in? We're focused on branding and creating mainstream brands. When it comes down to it, it's a mainstream product that's been marginalized. Our goal ultimately is to provide them with safe, clean access to a, a, a tested, uh, safe product. In so doing, we'll, we'll remove the black market and bring the entire industry into the light. Did any of your coworkers that you worked with at the, at the DEA, what did they have to say when you, you know, packed up your, your desk with all of your stuff in a brown box and you were walking out the door and you said goodbye? What did they say? I got a lot of congratulations. Um, I had a lot of guys express um, uh, the belief that uh, I was a, a trendsetter or a pioneer, which was a little surprising at the time. I got a lot of support. Uh, I got a few guys asking me for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty positive. Since joining Privateer Holdings, uh, your presence has sort of sparked a maybe called a media frenzy. More journalists are fascinated with this, uh, with this move of yours that you've made. Why do you think that people are so interested? I think that, uh, I mean, we've all heard the term, the, the blue line or the blue wall, right, that um, a lot of law enforcement uh, are either reluctant or prohibited to speak to the press. And so uh, it's a lot of the fascination, I think, stems from um, the ability to maybe get a bit of an inside look at um, some of these organizations that, that previously uh, were pretty unknown to most of the public. We all know that uh, the end of prohibition is coming, and I think everyone uh, recognizes that, and taking that first step is often the most difficult one. It just so happened I was the one to take it. Have you consumed marijuana yourself? I have, but it's been 20 years. In that 20 years, did you have experiences uh, with people you met or uh, maybe family members that began to change your mind, maybe, a, maybe when you were uh, a young person? I don't think it was uh, experiences with family or friends uh, really so much as my experiences on the job and as, my, uh, uh, as things evolved. As my viewpoint evolved, uh, as I spent more time on the job, I began to realize that um, enforcing the marijuana statutes as they're written was, was just an ineffective use of our resources. 
and that uh, you can say headache. That's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't so. Much, it wasn't a headache because it wasn't. You know, it's it's no more work than any other case that we do, right? It's just a matter of um, do we focus on this issue or do we focus on another issue? And and my personal belief, and I think is a belief that was shared by many of my colleagues, was that we should focus on other issues, mostly the so-called hard drugs, the ones that we feel have an actual, well, that I feel have a, an actual detrimental effect on society. The U.S. has been fighting the drug war for over 40 years now. Uh, do you think the war on drugs will come to an end at some point? I don't know. That's, that's a really uh, complex question, obviously. Um, I think that the war on marijuana will come to an end fairly soon. Um, I think the inevitability has, you know, is reached everyone at this point. Um, Why not harder drugs then? Well, I mean, my own personal point of view is that uh, drugs like uh, methamphetamine and heroin have legitimate, observable, harmful effects to the user and people around the user. And you definitely cannot say the same about cannabis. I mean, they're, they're not in the same category. You can't even talk about them in the same context. So I think they're totally separate discussions. And you know, the U.S. Justice Department's uh, 2013 uh, National Drug Threat Assessment uh, said that uh, the availability was increasing for heroin. It was also increasing for methamphetamine. I mean, and I know these numbers fluctuate from year to year to year, but... Will we really be able to live in a world where we can stop people from doing this drug? No, never. I mean, our mission, the mission at DEA, was really to uh, keep it under control, right? I don't think anyone was under the illusion that we were going to stop it, that we're going to win the war on drugs. Uh, we're, they were trying to minimize the associated harms. And when it comes down to it, we're sticking our thumbs in the dike. And there's only so much we can do. Uh, you know, we try to attack choke points, try to limit supply. There's little we can do about demand. As long as the demand continues to exist, uh, there will always be supply. But there will also be DEA agents, uh, like your former self, banging their head against the wall. That's true. Uh, I'm, you know, it, it's a... I guess it, it comes down to a cost-benefit analysis, right? Or, or is the job that the DEA doing producing a measurable benefit? There are some cases of mine in particular that I'm very proud of that I can look back at and say I had a measurable effect on this community for some period of time before it bounced back. Um, so, you know, part of DEA's role, I think, is to try and keep things under control uh, to a degree. Long term, are we going to succeed? Who knows? Do you ever think you will go back and work at the DEA? No. Really? Why not? Uh, that ship has sailed, I think. I had a really fulfilling career there. I just felt like it was time for new opportunities. Uh, there's really nothing there for me anymore. Um, I don't regret having worked there. Do you think that people like you that go and work in the private sector from coming from government, coming from the DEA, do you fear that it could create a world where there might be a revolving door, where the regulators go and work for the regulated? Well, I mean, that's a pretty common occurrence already, right, in government? Yeah, but not necessarily a great thing. Right. There's some debate over whether it's a benefit or not. I mean, I think everyone agrees in this particular instance it is a benefit. You know, what the future holds, I don't know. But I think that the, the important fact is going to be, or the important consideration will be, what are the attitudes and beliefs of these people? The more law enforcement officers that are willing to uh, acknowledge that prohibition is wrong, uh, the better off society is going to be. What do you say to the people that say, it's not the DEA agents themselves, it's the system. It's the over 40 years of the war on drugs. The the mentality that we're going to crack down on something that we can't stop, ever. I say they're not wrong. Um, you know, we've, we've perpetuated an idea that, that certain behavior is wrong, and I'm concerned that maybe we're not looking at things objectively anymore, that we need to really stop and look at, are we doing these things for the right reason? 
Um, and when it comes to marijuana, the policies that are in place right now, the official policies, I mean, the guidance to Washington State excluded, um, are wrong. Uh, they're misguided. And um, hopefully that's going to change soon. Is there anything people would be surprised about working as a special agent for the DEA? Hmm. Okay. Uh, Not like the vending machines suck or something. I mean, <laughs> you know, I think that there are there's a certain subset of the population that views DEA agents as jackbooted thugs that have uh, an agenda um, to oppress them or to. Uh, who knows, right? Um, but it's just another job. And there are guys there that are very competent. There are guys there that are less so, but they're all trying to do the job the best that they can. Um, and when it comes to uh, marijuana, I think that um, they would be, might be surprised to know that the overwhelming majority of the agents, at least that I ever interacted with, uh, don't feel that marijuana is a priority. And you guys discussed this smoking a bowl after after a long day, right? Uh, we discussed it. I think that's where the analogy okay. ends. But uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So everybody wants so. their piece. Everybody's getting. In. This guy was a good guy, though. He obviously had some good stuff to say about. Uh, how the war on drugs is wrong. Well, it is. It's, it's crazy. And then we're also looking at so many other aspects of it, right? So medical, fiber, fuel, food, clothing. Yep. Make hemp not war. That's what Plus I'm wearing. a lot of fun. It's always, always supporting the hemp industry. That's right. Yeah. Many so. things that pot's good for. Yeah, and actually Dana's article, the latest one that's on Cannabis Culture, um, the one about the history of Canada and cannabis has a great a little intro about what cannabis is good for and what has been used for historically. It's quite a nice piece. Dana's a great writer. Well, I'm fantastic. definitely uh, like it. After talking today, I, I have to read it. I haven't had a chance. Yeah, you should go take a peek. Be busy. One, cannabisculture.com. Oh, I, I, that's my weekends, you know. Yeah. You know, stay You're home for the weekend. Safety Sundays. Make some dry stuff. Safety Sunday. Safety Sundays. Stay nice. home Thursdays. Puff Wednesdays. Nice. Hey, you gotta name the days of the week in order to enjoy life. <laughs> you have to. You must. Very, very important. It's a stress reliever. You go nuts if you don't. So I still have uh, the interview to play of um, that I did earlier today with Kirk Tussaud, lawyer extraordinaire, cannabis. I think my amazing cannabis lawyer, probably yeah. one of the best. Cannabis, cannabis crusader, cannabis fighter. That's right. Helping people. Um, be able to grow their medicine and better understand the courts about law. Yeah, he, uh, maybe Marius can help get a picture of Kirk. Wow, look at that volcano. Bag. Or something that we can, so the audience can see who Kirk is when we play the <laughs> thing. If you just type in Kirk Tusa, you'll, get, you ready you'll for get some good photos Check this of the out. handsome devil that he look, is. Look, look what's showing oh, up Oh yeah, here. we got a big vapor bag. It's going to go right across. Wow, that thing's gigantic. Wow. Thank you, Katie. Mm. You don't mind being on Pod TV or what? No? Nope. So you can, you're a new lounge edition. Should give this girl a microphone. Oh. Oh Jesus. That was funny. So how how you liking it so far? It's good. The it's good. Yeah. Definitely one of the it's been, best uh, jobs I've had. What's that? <laughs> Definitely one of the best jobs I've had. Nope. Yeah, that's what I think about this place too. It's uh, it's not. It's a lot of hard work, but we have a lot of fun while we're doing it and get very very high. Okay. Woo. Big vapor bags. Yeah, I definitely. I, I enjoy the people. They're they're all very friendly and everyone's got like really good ideas and really good ways of thinking and it's really refreshing. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to actually ha like talk politics at work and yeah. You know, take part in something that you believe in and Exactly. Like it's 
it's awesome to work somewhere where everyone's so proud of what they're doing. Like, they're, yeah. it's not just like, oh, I work at Serta, I make mattresses, or oh, I work at McDonald's, I make burgers. It's like, right. you know, you're really proud of what you're doing, and you put every effort that you can into it. Yeah, for sure. It's like a dream come true for most people to be able to do something like that, to actually be proud of your job, or to like your job, or to go to work and every day and be like, you know, happy to say you went to that place and. You don't want to really, I like, I like being here. I don't really want to go home often. <laughs> no, yeah. I notice lots of people will chill after hours, like high. right after their shift, they'll stay and they'll just hang out. No, 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 no. I, said, no, I didn't say that unless you do it high because he's not wearing any pants. <laughs> There's actually a, a funny p- secret Everyone's picture of Kurt. Everyone's just my friend. <laughs> it is perfect. I love this picture. This is a great picture. Sorry, I was I was talking and looking. So we're looking at the screen picture here, and and everybody's laughing, and it looks like a picture of is that Kirk? It is Kirk. We're gonna that's, that's Kurt. we're gonna use that that's, picture. That's, Kurt. that's definitely gonna be back in the early days of Kurt. Was that when he first started going to college? What's that? That looks like some early days of Kurt. Um, yeah. That is some early. Well, it's not too so early. So one day you, the viewers no, no. out there, he's might still, be able to see that. He's wearing his NDP orange in that one. The NDP orange. Yeah, he's got his NDP orange on. He's not. We're a strange group on Fridays. We talk about random stuff. He might, because Kirk was. Look at the, the, the bag comes NDP. back. It's all wilted. Yeah, she's like, a, look at her. Wow. She's like, give me that. I'll take that. Yeah. Experienced. So, um, What's next on the list? Well, I was, we were going to talk. I was just going to give a little intro for this. I was going to talk about uh, the mandatory minimum sentences being struck down by Judge Galati right here in British Columbia. We did that. Yeah, we talked a little bit about it, but I'm going to play the um, the Kirk interview. So perfect. That's why I wanted to. Huh? Oh, too close to the mic, John says Marius. I'm sorry. It's wrapping out. Put my hand. John, over. you want to hit that? I'll take another one. Ooh. Thank you so much. That was awesome, Kitty. That was very excellent. Thanks for coming on Paw TV. <laughs> and thanks for the big vapor bag. So, oh. One man can only take so much. <laughs> yeah. So the best part about it is it just keeps you there. What happened to the picture of Kurt? Where the picture of Kurt go? No, uh, having the vaporizer bag here is great. It's nice to have a vaporizer uh, because, um, not yet, but just hold on. Um, no, I'm good on that. Yeah, I like having a vaporizer as well as smoking the actual plant material because it, <coughs> you can use the volcanoes to target different terpenes or different, uh, the profiles of the cannabinoids. So you can target the ones you want. Yes, you can actually um, hit it at different levels, so decarboxylate the um, cannabinoids, so you get more of like the old school ones we have here, sorry, with uh, level 3, pick me up, tasty, tasty, level 7, more up giving the level 9 as uh, pain relief. And yeah, exactly. If people, and a lot of people get to use that, they got all the different... It's cool that, but I actually like smoking the plant material because you kind of get all of that at once, where it's burning at several different temperatures, so you're kind of getting the profiles of everything together. I think that's kind of one of the benefits of it. Or at least that's according to Dr. Hornby in my conversations with him. Because, but I mean, it makes sense. As you're burning plant material, the temperature of the, the plant burns different all through the bowl, right? Yes. So you are getting kind of an assortment of the profiles. So there you go. Give me my weed plant material any day. Now, because obviously, a va- for those who don't know, I mean, a vaporizer takes the plant material out of the equation. You don't actually smoke any of that. You're just smoking the good stuff. Just those little trichomes getting boiled off, essentially. The goodness of cannabis. The goodness of cannabis. Yeah, there's some trichome snobs, though, who don't want to smoke any. Just the, just the stuff that comes off of it. Well, you know I what? I mean, it depends once you get to a level where you really, that's all you appreciate. Then I wouldn't call them trichome I snobs. I, was, <laughs> I mean, not, I wasn't trying to be mean. I was I just saying mean. I was like, yeah. I smoke bubble hash a lot. I smoke, I, that's what I more prefer. I know. And it, you know what? It's true. I do have to admit that there's probably nothing but junk in the plant material anyway. I mean, but it's I, just, it's it, just, the plant like itself say, is sacred we, we, in a way, right? People grow these big, huge trees, but really they're growing these bugs. I'm looking to grow the trichome. Right. It's the, if you can isolate the active ingredients, then you know where the, 
the goodness is, the juices. If you could just grow can- cannabinoids and wouldn't care about like you, would, you wouldn't grow anything else. You wouldn't grow a big tree if you could just grow those little glandular heads. Yeah. You would have no interest right. at all. Not, it would just be like the tree you see outside. It would be like the shrub. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You could care less. But the reason why we love it so much is because of that little, right? So isn't that what you want to smoke? I mean, that's what I'm trying to talk about Health Canada. That's what I use. I don't use the rest of the plant, and they're trying to force the rest of the plant on me for my medication, right? So, yeah. But we've talked about this already. We have. That's very true. Um, okay, well, let's, let's go ahead and play this Kirk interview. This was just our conversation this morning about Judge Galati. I just wanted to know um, if this throwing out of the drug mandatory minimum for a different kind of case, um, it wasn't about marijuana, it was about other drugs, but I, I just wanted to know if Kirk thought that this would have any effect on the marijuana side of things. Because, of course, now we have our mandatory minimum sentences for marijuana. If you are caught in certain situations, um, you will be thrown in jail for a year, just like this guy would have been. So we haven't seen any of those in front of the courts yet, but I know that Kirk does have some coming up, and there's others coming up. So I guess we'll have to find out what happens on the marijuana side, but Kirk has some interesting things to say about that. So let's give this a play. Yeah, I'll play it on this one. It's going to go through the board, so we'll have to turn our mics down. So once this starts playing, try not to yap in the mic too much until we get it turned down. You can't mute it through there because it's going through here. It's coming through the board, so we still need the board on. Don't change the speaker's audio stuff on there um, just afterwards. So yeah, anyways, we'll be back after this interview with Mr. Kirk Tussaw, cannabis lawyer. I wanted to talk to you or just ask you about the Judge Galati in BC and yeah. that whole case. Um, yeah. I'm wondering what you think about it and what kind of an effect do you think that'll have on the pot law, the pot mandatory minimums? Well, I mean, I think Judge Galati's a good judge, very experienced judge. Uh, obviously, in that courthouse, uh, 222 Main, he deals with a lot of. Uh, drug offenses uh, arising out of the downtown east side. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think he, I haven't read the full decision. I'm not sure it's even available, but uh, from the reports of the decision, it appears that he felt like a mandatory jail sentence for the individual that was before him was cruel and unusual punishment, was not something that was uh, uh, in comport with the charter. Uh, and, suspect, you know, uh, found the mandatory minimum regime to be uh, a charter violation. So I, I agree, <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, that it is, uh, that taking discretion out of the hands of judges um, it really is an affront to the basic principles of sentencing law in Canada. Uh, and, you know, in terms of the ramifications, a little difficult to say, I mean, as a technical matter, you know, it should, the law should be binding on all uh, courts at the same level, which is where most criminal offenses are dealt with at the provincial court level. Most drug offenses are dealt with. So, you know, I, I don't, I did not read, for example, that he had suspended the Declaration of Invalidity, so presumably it went into effect right away. Uh, and so my hope is that... Uh, that it's going to have a broader impact, at least until it is, until there's an appeal decided. Right. And now, how, how will we know if it does have a broader impact? Is there something that would make it not have an impact on, say, the marijuana laws? Well, there's a case called Hansard Spruce Mills that says that you're supposed to follow the decisions, of course, at the same level, unless there are one of three reasons to depart from it. I couldn't tell you what all three are, but they essentially have to do with the first judge not fully considering the law uh, or not, uh, you know, not, or not making a decision that was a decision based on careful reflection, uh, but rather sort of a spur of the moment kind of thing. I, I don't think any of those principles apply. And so in my, from my perspective, uh, the decision should be binding. And I'll tell you that I'll know uh, because I have two cases involving mandatory sentencing for marijuana-related offenses in which I'm going to attempt to uh, broker uh, deals uh, on the argument that the mandatory sentencing is now off the table. And so it's 
you know, my clients are in a position to make deals where otherwise they probably would have had to go the distance. Right. So, Kirk, now I'm wondering about um, about the appeal itself. If an appeal happens, which I'm assuming will, I mean, the, the government's not just going to want to let it stand. Um, what are the chances of... This is different than the the other thing that you were just mentioning. Those three options, that would be why the court wouldn't have to stick with that sort of a precedent. Um, the appeal yeah. itself could also overturn it, right? Well, that's right. And the first route of appeal will be to the B.C. Supreme Court. That's the next step up the chain. Uh, they could reverse the decision on legal grounds. Uh and then presumably it would go to the B.C. Court of Appeal either way, uh, and that court would get to chime in on whether or not Judge Galati got it right or wrong. Mm-hmm. And now the judge, he's talking about the fundamental principle behind the mandatory minimums, and he's not the first judge to throw out a mandatory minimum in Canada, right? No, I mean, these drug mandatory minimums, as I understand it, were also found to violate the charter by a judge out east or in, in Quebec a few months ago, uh, you know, and with previous mandatory sentencing under a different act had been found to violate the charter, but it was, you know, more stringent. Uh, maybe the one out east might have been a handgun one, actually, now that I think about it. That's what I was thinking. I, I thought the other one was a gun mandatory minimum. Yeah, I think you might be right about that. Now, does that have any bearing as well, though? I mean, does because the principles, I mean, the, the principles behind the mandatory minimums are the thing coming into question. So, would a case like that gun case play into this latest one or any any after that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the legal rationale uh, underlying the decision is going to be relevant, uh, whatever the context, uh, and it's up to lawyers to argue whether it's really relevant, deeply relevant, important, or whether it's just, hey, that's a different context, and really it shouldn't have much bearing on your decision here in this case. Right. Cool. So that's exciting stuff, I guess, then. Now, you know, going forward, a drug case, this one was not really marijuana, obviously, but if, um, you know, do we have any mandatory pot cases going forward that you've seen that a judge is going to have to make a decision on? Or, I mean, that that a judge is going to, I guess, not get to make a decision on? <laughs> well, I'm, I've got two uh, that are currently facing mandatory uh, sentencing. And uh, and so, you know, I, at some point, if, uh, if I can't broker a resolution in this window that's been created by Judge Galati's decision... Uh, then I expect one or both of my clients may well have to be in a position to challenge uh, challenge the law because mm-hmm. neither one of them deserves to go to jail for two years. And Kirk, to you, what is the what's the main problem with these mandatory minimums? Why are they so and why why don't the judges like them? Well, I think we have in Canada fundamental principles and purposes of sentencing that are set out in the criminal code. Uh, and a couple of those are impacted directly by the imposition of mandatory sentencing laws. Uh, you're supposed to sentence similar offenders in similar circumstances to similar sentences as people have received in the past. So there's some consistency in the application of punishment. Uh, so, for example, in the medical marijuana context, uh, virtually all of my clients that were producing marijuana for medical purposes in, in normal situations uh, have received charges longer available. And so you can see that somebody who uh, is sentenced today is going to be treated, despite it being in similar circumstances, committing a similar offense, is going to be treated very, very differently than somebody who was sentenced even six months ago or three months ago, just depending on when they were charged. So that, that's a principle of sentencing that's being violated by the mandatory minimum sentencing regime. As well, you know, judges are tasked with the response. And it's a, it's a difficult responsibility. Each case on its merits. And to apply it an appropriate and just sanction. I mean, that's what the law tells them to do. 
law of a judge, you know, like Judge Galati, who's, you know, been overseeing these kinds of uh, offenses for you know, uh, quite a long time, he's a very experienced jurist, um, comes to a conclusion that the appropriate sentence and just sentence in a particular case is house arrest, for example, uh, the, the sentencing regime now does allow him to impose that appropriate and just sentence, which again, uh, violates some of the basic sentencing rules that have been placed in this country for a very long time. Right, I guess judges don't like it so much when they're all of their own abilities are being taken away from them. Um, especially when these cases are such, they seem so ridiculous. I mean, we're not, we're not talking about murder here. We're talking about some pot plants. Well, that's it. Uh, we're talking about, or in the, in the context of the decision that we're speaking of, some very low level, uh, probably uh, sus- substance addiction level dealing in the downtown east side. And what, and what are you going to do? Are you going to lock a thousand, two thousand people up from the downtown east side for a couple of years each uh, for the crime of essentially being addicts who are, or, or are selling a little bit of uh, substance they're addicted to in order to in order to be able to afford some for themselves, uh, it's not right. Uh, and it doesn't fit, you know, punishment doesn't fit the crime. Uh, and I think judges are alive to that. And, you know, there's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a tension there created by the legislature uh, in terms of the division of powers in this country. You know, the, the courts are very reluctant to intrude in areas that are considered to be legislative. They, they don't like striking down laws. They don't like reading in exceptions to laws based on the charter, even though they have the power to do so, uh, because of respect for the legislative sphere. And, and, and similarly, you would hope that the legislature would have some respect for the judicial sphere and leave judges to do the job that they've been doing pretty well for quite a while. Uh, in sentencing, but the legislature of the conservative government has chosen not to do that, and and I think that that probably offends uh, a lot of the bench. Yeah, well, it probably should. <laughs> and I mean, doesn't well, it really doesn't isn't it really putting power in the hands of the prosecutors to decide whether these people will be going to jail or not? It there is a shifting of of responsibility for sure because the, the prosecutor can lay a different charge and avoid the impact of the mandatory sentencing regime. So, you know, there is discretion, and there's been a transfer of discretion, really, from the bench uh, to um, to another arm of the government, this time the executive power. But, you know, in Canada, we don't, we don't truly have necessarily an executive like they would in, in the U.S., for example. And so, uh, at the end of the day, the, the Crown council works for the Department of Justice, which is an arm of the government of Canada that passed this legislation. So they've really you know, accrued the power to themselves in some respects. Right. Well, that's not a big surprise for this government, I guess. No, it's not a big surprise at all, unfortunately. I mean, look, they campaigned on it, they ran on it, and they implemented it. It's, uh, you, can't, you can't accuse them of being, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess not forthright about what they were going to do if they were elected into power. They they said they'd do this. They they ran on it in some respects, and they did it. Right, and and even some people who are friendly to us now supported it back in the day. Well, it's unfortunately true. The Liberal Party of Canada uh, supported this legislation, voted for it, uh, and uh, had an opportunity to not support it actually, and. and um, now has promised, of course, to do a comprehensive review of the criminal code and also to do, a, you know, to legalize marijuana at least, and, and hopefully as part of a broader-based uh, dismantling of prohibition of drugs in general. Uh, but I guess everybody's entitled to make mistakes and learn from them. Now, Kirk, what would it really take to to go back and and overturn some of the damage the conservatives conservatives have done? Even if the judge, you know, says the mandatory minimums aren't constitutional, what about the rest? I mean, is there a way to get rid of the rest of the damage they've done? 
Well, I mean, as with any, I guess, government, you can have a new government come in and, and begin to or either restore some of the rights that the population used to hold, restore some of the social programming that benefited uh, the population, and, and do all the other things that you need to do to, I would say, to make Canada the country it was when I came here uh, before the conservative government took power, you know, a, a country that had a lot of respect in the world, that was looked up to as a champion of, of peace and human rights and, uh, and social freedom, and to really... You know, restore us to that role, which I think is, is where most Canadians believe we should be. Right, so I guess it's really a matter of uh, putting in a good government that will actually be able to do that. <laughs> we need the seats first, I guess. But That's the key. That is the absolute key, isn't it? 2015 and, and ousting the Conservatives from power. Yeah, well thank you very much, Kirk, for the info. I do appreciate it. We're back. And we're back. Froze after our video played. Yeah, someone stepped away we, to go get dinner. We tried to, uh, to, when we switched it back, it always freezes like that. It does that constantly. It's a glitch. It's a live stream thing that seems to be on transitions. It's a glitch. Back from the video. Don't know why. Sometimes it freezes. Huh. But I yeah. I should be rolling something, maybe? Oh, that's not a bad idea. Uh-oh. Okay. What would you like? Um, well. Hey, skunk. Yeah. Push. Sativa that, and the That all sounds good. All together mixed in one. It all sounds great okay. to me. Okay, we're going to do a mix. What's that? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, this thing must have... Uh, oh, it's not. Can you grab I've done again? nothing. I've done nothing. You did it all, Johnny B. doesn't really matter. It's not like it's essential. Yeah, it's the battery on my laptop here. Did the battery on uh, my laptop die? Do you have a yeah. plug-in? I do have a plug-in. So, we're still live, though, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, so, we what had a mindless glitch over here, and... Jeremiah's got to fix some things. I'm gonna actually roll some some goodness down here. What are you rolling though? Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna verdict. This jar. <laughs> what is it? The skunk. Here. Here. Mm. Oh my God! You got to show one of those buds off too, because. You hold that far. Wow, Sorry guys. Yeah, I know it's a long reach. I'm not getting. That, those ones are really nice though. Those ones are wait worth a showing second. Off. We might actually have someone to do it for us. Hey, wait! Don't we have another camera over here? Yeah, yeah we have there. another, Pass we me have another cam camera. over here. Yo, it's staring at the gesture and something. We have another cam over here on the desk, don't we? Can't we just pan to that? Oh, it's not working? Oh, that cam's got some issue with it. There you go. Um, camera guys, can show put your hand behind it and Mine's do something? Woo, woo, woo. Oh, yeah. Sweet old goodness, uh, that started flushing on day 35. I added some finisher on about day 45, and it got water for like till day 101. Nice. Yeah. And everybody seems to love it, so we can't say it. It's uh, not good. Wait, what did you just say? So I fed it four? with Medi 1 until day 35. Oh. And then I added like finisher and some massive. Day 39, day 45, and then I gave it water for till day 101. Day 101. Oh, that's the 101. Yeah, that's why I call it 101. Yeah, that's that's. Well, I said I, I thought it was day 100, and then when I went inside and checked on the calendar, Thanks it was for day 101. That off, man. Yeah, that's crazy stuff, and it smells amazing too. So yeah, pretty much. I mean, the show at this point is pretty much done. What time is it right now? I. I think we played all the videos that I wanted to play, and we did all the things I wanted to do. Um, but uh, we could smoke some more pot here before we go. Well, we're just gonna finish it off with uh, yeah, when we we'll say hit dessert. Yeah, we'll bong a couple times. These guys should have some. Are bong we gonna ribs, do some maybe. bong rips instead? We'll just throw, we're gonna load yeah, bong. Yeah, some bong rips, bong man. Bong rip. Get out the red beard. Get out. Uh, that's not Duchess. Duchess. Yeah, and hit. Let's hit the red beard here. Hit the red beard. Load up Lovecraft. Lovecraft, the beautiful Redbeard glass piece by Mr. Redbeard himself. Custom design here. Oh man, this thing's nuts. It's so awesome. It hits really well too. It's got this crazy uh, Beetlejuice curly Q on it. Um, no, 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 no. We'll try that after. Um, so when packing a bong, pour. Pack, pour, pack, pour, pack. And this one's going to last for a little bit. So I'm going to pack this bra out. It's a nice little uh, bowl to pack. Ah. 
Old school, you know, 1985. I like that. The bowl, this, look at the actual bowl itself, though. It's such a nice bowl. It's got layers in it just like the rest of it does, too. The bong has all these crazy complex layers on it, but you can really see them defined in the tip of the bowl there. Drum roll. Yeah, I'm really baked already, man. It's crazy. <laughs> bong along with us. Mmm. Thank you, John Brefello. That's John B. John B. Oh. <laughs> it's just John it's nice B, man. I'm just John. It's just John B. Just John. That is your name. They were calling me Medi John, and then Medi John came along. So, no, but it, it was Medi John first, and kind of got a. Apparently, I had some identity theft. Some people are telling me, but it's kind of funny. We laugh. Um, yeah, yeah, one of those things, eh? But um, no, so John B. I like Ooh. it. Yeah, it's who I am. JB. JB. One of my cups JB. just says JB, right? So, yeah. I'm John. You're the man. No, I'm just John. Yeah. That's a nice full bowl there. I packed that so nicely. I'd say Look, that's it's full of weed. That's full of weed? That's what I say. Old school, oh, that's, 1985. That's I packed the bowl. Burns that's forever. It. Light it once. It keeps burning. You just got to add some, a little bit of air. See? Yeah. That keeps going. Light her up. There you go. Wow. See? Teaching the young guys. Put it back in there. But you see, once you've taken that first, once you've taken that first one, you vaporized all the plant, the good stuff, in there. You know. Yeah. It's I said old school, 1985. We weren't thinking about vaporizing or anything like that. It was just like, pack the bowl, make it last. <laughs> Keep hitting it. Pack it again. Oh, here we go. <coughs> Oh, yeah. Um, so apparently um, there's a crowd outside. Oh, they the want lounge to. The, the lounge is a busy place on a Friday night. It is. it is downtown Vancouver. We are the pot capital of Canada. That's very true. It is BC, bud. <coughs> That's this why everybody's here. I see super, some guys out here too. from out of town, from maybe out of country. You know, Volcano Bay oh, yeah, is doing really is well over there. Destination. Fully some good things going on. People are happy. <laughs> It's a good place to be. Come on it's down. It's a very nice place to be. It's where you should be on a Friday night. Well, it's a, one of the more jumping spots Saturday. in Vancouver here. Vancouver's there's Sunday. a lot of snoozing going on in Vancouver. There's some really good stuff going on in Vancouver Pizza too. Places. But uh, if you want to have some real fun, this is the block to do it on. This is the place to be. Yeah. Well, but, uh, uh, anyways, are we, um, I think that we can pretty it? much wrap this up for well, the day. It's really nice. I th what do you think? Unless one of you boys want to take a bond rip on the air. You can probably, you want to talk, oh, you want to come over and have a bond rip before we go? <laughs> come and, you, you want to sit on the couch and have a bond rip? Come on the other side. Load that shit up. Load the shit up. Um, yeah, so we'll see about these mandatory minimums. I think the judges will just keep, so it's not just this last drug case that was a mandatory minimum that was overturned. There was also some gun cases. That was um, the first one. Yeah, the, there was the gun case that, um, Again, found unconstitutional, mandatory minimums. Um, and according to uh, Paul Lewin, oh, and Kirk Tusa, these cases are going to have a serious effect on things, or should have at least some effect on things, is this depending on which bong? one you ask. What's this that? is the three-foot bong, but there is a four-foot bong. There, this is a three-footer, yeah. Yeah, there's a four-footer. There's a four-foot. This yeah. is... Yeah, the a four short. foot. It's a Marcel Brown four foot bong. Is a little too crazy. Wow. I still want to be able to reach it by myself. No, it's a it's a long way. Like you a hand stand a, on top. A yeah, stick. It's, it's crazy. Anyways, I'm me. I'm gonna hit this one for you. Sure, oh. light me up, brother man. We got um, light me That's a uh, sound of Jeremiah's bong rip. We got some uh, singers in the crowd. Come on up, sir. <laughs> on Give that guy a microphone. Pot TV live today. <laughs> First appearance. Yeah, I, I've heard that song a few yeah. times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh we, we, people are like, wow, we got to get <laughs> out of here now. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're live on this side. Um, 
<coughs> oh, all right. Well, we should probably go. That was a great bong rip. <coughs> Cri- poor, I feel bad about well, Chris um, Goodwin. I know always. he's been waiting. <coughs> he wanted to come on the air. Um, but uh, I think it's too... We could give it a try, see if it works. Um, but I don't really trust our whole uh, Skype vision here. It's been a choppy... It's been a choppy day for that whole thing. We could give it a try and see if he's on there. Hold on, let, let's, why not? End the show. Let's see. The thing is, let's call Chris Goodman right now and see if, if he wants to give it a shot. I don't mind hanging around and <coughs> giving it a shot and seeing how it goes. It might not be a very uh, good, broad, <coughs> good connection, but... Well, that was um, thoroughly enjoying and amazing because I did a hoss. I did some of this. I did some of the medi all together. That was a hoss little, little bits. Yeah. Mm. Tasty. The, a salad. Yo, what's up, Chris? Hey. Hey, do you want to give it a try anyway and see how it works? It might be a little too choppy, but... Uh... <coughs> Well, we could do that, and we could just plug in on audio that way. If the Skype thing doesn't work, well, let's give it a try. Let's test it out. Say that. Say that again. Okay. Okay, we'll give that a try, and if that doesn't work, then we'll connect on the telephone for audio. So you know. they're trying to hook some things up here. Jeremiah no. and Chris Goodwin are talking on the phone. It might not be the best connection in the universe. And apparently it's not the best connection in the world, so... We're going to try. We're going to look at this beautiful Lovecraft, which we've all seen before. And we always support, of course, we love Vancouver. Little good things about our show, you know. Hey, we're always looking well. I, I, I'm, I'm the guy that has to go. So I'm going to uh, have to say um, peace, everybody, you know. What's that? Uh, um. I'm pushing parking, 615. Oh, I see. You're parking. Yeah, cats. I live in Abbotsford. Oh, yeah, this neighborhood, those guys will come in and like... Well, I've already done the oh. being here since 3, 4, 5, uh, 6. I'm pushing the four-hour mark. It, it's even having a problem signing in, Chris. On my screen, it says signing in. It just has a wheel spinning. Yeah, it's a really, it seems to be a really poor connection. We're, we're not plugged in on this computer. It doesn't have an Ethernet connection. So definitely technical problems. What, is the, what, do, what do people in chat want to talk about? Do we got chat going on there? Are they saying anything? Do they care? Yeah, and then, and then I can play it on next week's show. <laughs> we're, get, we're getting this guy to... Uh, what's it, what are they saying in chat? Do we have a video to play? Put on some like Bob Marley. People like to like listen to some reggae on a nice Friday afternoon. That's a great thing. No, maybe some redemption or heavy metal fans out there, some Metallica. What do we got playing? Oh, I was looking at maybe some nice. What 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 do the people in the chat want to hear? We're going to throw a video on, throw something out there. Throw something. Like throw something. Sister video. Well, the, Jeremiah went for Twisted Sister. I threw out some Bob Marley or some Redemption or maybe some Iggy or you know. And then there's um, some good old Van Morrison. I don't know. I mean, no, no, no. no. We should, uh, We're trying. Is this mic on? Oh, and we've unplugged you. <laughs> it's been my show for the last little bit. Yeah, Thanks. that's cool. My name's John. I like that. B. Um. Yeah, we are logged in now, but you know what? I hmm. I just don't even want to. We'll just do it later. I'm gonna <coughs> nice. record a broadcast with Chris that we have in the Chris version. You can find that on Pod TV the beginning of next week. We'll do like a good little in- recorded interview. That's the smart way to do it, because I want it, p- it to be like actually watchable anyway. So, you know. Rather Legs than some up. I'm getting comfortable. Thing, I'm we'll just do it right. Get comfortable. And we we did a show Take already. Back. It's already six sixteen. We did a good show today. Got really high. Lots of fun. We medicated quite well. You know, I was quite relaxed, and it was nice to relax yeah. and chill and 
thanks for Talk being about, the wingman. Uh, it was good. It was fun. Canadian cannabis news and worldwide things, and of course, pot, weed, cannabis, marijuana. <laughs> you got it, brother. Are you high? Um, I'm well medicated right now. I am also. I agree with you. Um, but yeah, check out all the other shows on Pot TV. You can find them all on the front page of Pot TV, www.pot.tv. And you can find more about the cannabis culture at cannabisculture.com. So check it all out, yo. Peace, Pot TV. Love ya. Peace, guys.